starts as a sea of chips across a dynamic landscape of poker tables. Now, after four grueling days, the remaining field is in one room. Yes. One more destination. One time, baby, come on. Man. To the final destination as the voyage to November continues. The World Series Maine is the shot of all shots, you know? Everybody dreams of playing this. You can feel the electricity in the air. <laughs> it's a very tough tournament in terms of stamina to just make it through seven days without making mistakes, without blowing up. You've got to keep it fun and you've got to enjoy the moment. Nuts, monkey, nuts, coconuts. You've just got to enjoy playing and that's it. The players know that in this sea of chips, all right. there can only be all one captain. To the final table is on. Just 251 players remain in the main event. Day five, here we are. No messing about. Time to crush. Come on, England. Oi, oi. Booyah. Main event, day five. Ready to ninja it up. Is this where the main event is? In here. Oh, OK, cool. I got to play some poker today. A lot of great players left. I'm just happy to be here, man. Day five. And tomorrow will be day six. We have to get you, through it again. You are good with numbers. Yes, I just, yes, I buddy. I realized that about you. Very guys. important. Yeah. Very important. Gail Bowman has made this walk before. Back in 2012, she finished 10th. Hello, everyone. Lon McCarron along with Norman Chad and Kara Scott on this day five of the World Series of Poker main event. Would it kill the World Series to put up a banner of you and me? Jeez. <laughs> Dan Coleman knows what it takes to win a major World Series event. I believe that is the same white t-shirt he wore when he won the big one in 2014. Johnny Chan is holding out hope for main event bracelet number three with a below average stack. I'm texting my parents. Yeah, I see. They're sending me some bitmojis. I don't see <laughs> oh my god. Oh, right. 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 Alex Keating makes his entrance to a feature table. <laughs> I'm telling you, it will not be all right if this guy says all right Can another five that? times. Yeah. Buddy, I'm good for it. I'm good for it. I know. I know. Things are definitely all right for chip leader. Brian Pacioli is the only player over four million chips. Well, I keep telling you, leaderboards are irrelevant. Irrelevant! Four million chips on day five won't get you the November 9. Irrelevant or not, here's our current top ten. Coleman stacked in second place. Melanie Weisner sitting in ninth. Remember that Melanie had that huge hand on day four. If there's such a thing as momentum, and believe me, there isn't, she has it, which is impossible because it doesn't exist. <laughs> there's Melanie making her way to the main feature table. Just before the first hand of the day, she will have the most chips there when she sits down. Melanie has the second biggest stack at the table to her direct left. That's not good, if you believe that position is important in poker, which it is. Gail Bowman with an above average stack is in prime position for another super deep main event run. Gail was great back in 2012. Here's my pro tip, and I don't give out many. Be aggressive, Gail, if you believe aggressiveness is important in poker, which I hear it is. <laughs> Weister opened under the gun to 56,000. His name is not Per Linda for no reason, the 27-year-old Swedish pro with pocket eights. He's also currently a student at the University of Stockholm. And with pocket eights, he seems like a deer caught in headlights. Had a $187,000 score on a Planet Hollywood tourney just before his main event began. 56. Good. And he says call. So two players in the hand. Bill Hulse folds to the button. Drew Demansky, 25-year-old pro from Dallas. Recently lost 120 pounds. The problem with that, you have to buy all new t-shirts. Oh. He makes the call. In the big blind, Jason Strasser, 31-year-old, familiar name in poker. This guy is too educated, too smart, too accomplished, and too good at everything he does. Former online monster now runs a hedge fund. 32,000 more he calls with suited 8-7. Four players will see this flop. The very first hand of the day. Love it. There's the flop, and Linda flops a set of eights with the last eight in the deck. Weisner with top pair, best tread lightly. Strasser checks. Weisner coaches Eric Seidel's daughter, Seidel, a former Wall Street guy, is Jason Strasser's favorite player. Weisner has the action with her suited King Jack. Top pair, 127,000. I don't know what the charges are, but he looks guilty. And for the love of poker, he's wearing his hand on his shirt. You're right, 888. Pair Linda just calls. Demansky folded, Strasser folds. 
Linda, 57th at the 2011 main event. Turn card, another king. Melanie thinks yay, but we all know it's oomph. It's oomph and ouch. Eight's full now for Linda as Wisner checks. Pair Linda, clear eyes, full house, can't lose. He can lose. I said he can't. Okay. Linda now putting chips together. This could get expensive for Melanie Wisner, 285,000. Melanie Wisner, part of my redhead brigade here at the main event. Melanie, John Turner, Jennifer Shahade, and Adam Friedman all still in the hunt for the $8 million top prize. But in the first hand of day five, Melanie, who is this table's top stack, in a rough, rough spot. Yeah, rivulets of doubt perhaps creeping into her thought process. Still reaching for chips. Hard to get away from her hand. She does make the call. Wiseman in deep trouble. River card now. Tray of spades. How much can Linda extract from Wisner now as Melanie checks again? Uh, listen, hot shot pair. Linda now can't lose unless he folds. And he'd only fold, I'd imagine, if he got a really important phone call he had to take. Absolutely. This is a two-handed bet. 702,000, a hefty bet. The thing is, Linda could be bluffing here. He might have missed a heart draw. I've got to believe Melanie's got a call. There it is. And her dread is confirmed. And with that, a shifting of power as Pear Linda is top dog now at this featured table. Wisner takes a costly hit. Nice hand. Thanks. Poker is a game of skill, but it was unlucky that Melanie wasn't 30 seconds slower this morning getting out of bed. If she misses that hand, she's still got three million chips, and Pear Linda doesn't have three million. In case you needed any reminder of how fragile a chip stack can be at the main event, look no further than Melanie Wisner's first hand of day five. A top 10 stack quickly withers into middle of the pack obscurity. Can she recover? Of course, but she'll need to forget what just happened and move on. Lon is an expert on forgetting what just happened and moving on. Let me address Melanie directly here. Melanie, forget what just happened and move on. I did it with Betamax, I did it with the 2007 main event, and I'm trying to do it with Pokemon Go. To quote Lord Byron, adversity is the first path to truth. Lord Byron. Lord Byron. So shake it off, Melanie, and build it back up. Besides, the main event could use a female or two at the final table. And when you build that stack, Melanie, grab all those lavender chips you can. They're worth 100 grand. Still the 1K, 5K, and 25K chips in play. Down in C2, Hector Alvarez was all in with top pair, but James Opes rivered Kings up to score the pot and eliminate Alvarez in 247th place. Yeah, 413. Never seen that happen before. Here's poker in 2016 in a nutshell. James Opes knocks out an opponent on day five of the main event with a three-outer, and he's more engaged on tagging his earbuds than in gathering in the pot. He was the chip leader for much of day four. He has over 3.6 million right now. That's clean living. No, that's not it. Hector will head for the pay cage to pick up his almost 37 grand. While we were covering Hector's elimination, first-timer Valentin Vornicu eliminated another player. Maria Ho is gone from the main event. I feel so fortunate to have had so many opportunities to get deep in the main event, hoping that um, this year was going to be the year that I made it past day five. Day five has kind of been my uh, the thorn in my side for both of my deep runs, but just putting myself in good spots, and uh, hopefully one day uh, it'll uh, equal a bracelet on my wrist. It's early on day five at the main event, but already one major hand has shifted the balance of power at the feature table. Pear Linda flopped a set, turned a full house, and Melanie Wisner takes the direct hit. Linda met his fiance Maria in high school. I can't remember any girl talking to me in high school. Uh, of course, nowadays, I imagine women just line up around the block to talk to you. Good for you. This guy is like a Geico commercial, Norman. When your name is Pear, you play pears. It's what you do. <laughs> But, but I don't understand. Pear is just engaged, but he already appears to be wearing a wedding ring. I cannot recommend this. Good point. You saw William. They call him Bill Hulse. He raised to 55000 with pocket fours under the gun, and now a re-raise from Linda to 140. Well, I can recommend a re-raise to 140. Linda with the stare. 
Holst, 41-year-old Colorado amateur, worked in Call. banking operations for 22 oh. years. Thought about shaving this morning, decided not to. <laughs> He's got about 2,000 in lifetime poker earnings. The payout now almost 40K. He's a happy camper. He does make the call. Heads up. Holst the short stack at this table. Here is the flop. Five queen tray. No four. Holst gets the stare treatment again. Yeah, Linda looking intensely at Holst, but Holst is playing hard to get. Pair first to act here with the over pair. I've never had it before. Over pair. Huh. It is Fedor Holtz like the way he moves his chips. 115,000 worth. Full Broncos gear over there in the middle of summer in Las Vegas. Makes sense. He looks committed oh. to those fours. There's the call from Holtz. Turn card. Another queen. And Linda taking stock of Hulse again. Hulse again ignoring Linda. Okay. Now a check with the paired board. Oh, now we have a connection. This could lead to a beautiful friendship. All in. Uh-oh. Uh, Hulse pushes with about 15 big blinds left. He sounded a little shaky about it. Linda wants a count. Yeah, it's for less than 15% of Linda's remaining stack. I think Hulse is in the process of getting wamboozled. <laughs> Hulse looking for some way to score this pot. But that's oh. not the way. There is the call with the Kings up. And Bill Hulse one card away from elimination. Hulse was hoping Linda was really weak. Hulse looking for a four on the river. That's about Gotta have a four. River cards a deuce, makes it official. Hulse is out. Tough spot for Bill. He tried to use the paired board for leverage, but it was not to be. How did that stop? No, yeah, can't complain. <laughs> In just two hands against Wisner and Hulse, Linda has doubled his stack. King stacks and a full house and like the first one. That was one. terrible. <laughs> just how you planned it, right? Yeah. I mean, it's a bit better than I planned it. <laughs> I'll take it. Oh, you're just hoping to just make the full house to start, not the yeah. other hands? <laughs> I mean, I was waiting for kings for the second orbit. But, uh, just going a little faster. <laughs> yeah. Everybody wants to go home, right? Right. <laughs> Melanie not impressed with Pear's great start to the day as her chip stack took a big hit just a moment ago. We'll keep it here at the feature table. Linda with a 1.1 million chip lead on the second biggest stack at this table. Ace 8 suited for Ritas Praninskas, a Lithuanian poker pro. My grandfather was from Lithuania, but I think the other side of the country. He's got 200,000 almost in live earnings, but this is his first main event. 26 year old raises to 55,000. Linda with Ace Jack. Pair Linda, a beneficiary of Amazon Prime's new premium card delivery service <laughs> that delivers premium cards same day. <laughs> you know, he might be into soccer more than he's into poker, and he's really into poker. Writes a soccer blog, and there's the re-raise with Ace Jack to 135. Praninskas, now the third member of the feature table to run into the Pair Linda wall. We'll see how the Lithuanian handles the Swedish pro. Oh, he's got some of the Lavender 100K chips. And there's a four bet to 287. He does not believe. Well, if this were 1996, a four bet would mean only aces, kings, or maybe queens. If this were 2006, a four bet could be ace eight or worse. Here in 2016, I don't know what a four bet represents anymore. <laughs> the game has passed me by, Lon. The game could stand still and would pass you by, Norman. <laughs> all in. Wow, all in. a five bet to put Praninskas all in, and he quickly mucks. You have it so much. Show she like four or five this time. <laughs> How does he do Show it? Show a bluff one time. We'll, we'll see it anyway. What counts as a bluff? <laughs> <laughs> Praninskas has the Swedish flag on his shirt. Maybe if he's wearing the Lithuanian flag, he would have won that pot. 
Yeah, he can't afford to be four-bet folding too often here. Still in the field is the great Johnny Chan, two-time main event champion for decades, one of the most intimidating forces on the felt. His Orient Express nickname came when he eliminated 13 of the final 16 players once within 30 minutes in a 10K tourney. How the hell did they hit? No, first time nobody raised it with, with the big blind. It's amazing. I hiding those cards. I ain't, I ain't showing no more. Kara <laughs> Scott has more on Johnny Chan. Johnny Chan has more experience at main event final tables than anyone else in this room, with back-to-back -back wins in 87 and 88 being just two of his 10 bracelets over his 40-year career. He's absolutely one of the legends of this game. Now, I asked him what the secret to longevity is for poker, and he said it was three things. Stay in shape, have good money management, and always take care of your family. And he did admit to me that after this many years, it's not just about fun for him anymore. This is all business. You don't know why I love poker. I'll tell you why. You think you know why? <laughs> well, let's hear it. Because he, he doesn't play. He doesn't need the money, so he's he's here because he enjoys it. So he's not he's not you know we're all here to make money. He doesn't need to make money to play. Poker. He does it because he enjoys Everybody it. Everybody likes money. You have enough. Is there ever? Is there ever? And so if you have a big job, you can say you know no, what I'm, I'm saying, making enough. I don't need to take more. He has a, He does this for fun. He doesn't need the money, so he enjoys it. He knows everything. He's not saying anything because he knows I'm right. No, you're 100% wrong. Yeah. Play your hand. <laughs> <laughs> I'm partially right. They still pay him from rounders. <laughs> That, that is true. They're still sending me residual. Chad still so hard to read, even as he approaches 60 years of age. Throughout the tournament, tables break to fill empty seats at other tables. One of our feature tables just broke, and Mr. All Right, Alex Keating drew a seat right. here at the main feature table. All right. All right. Main event, table full of fish. This is just what I wanted. All right. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> As Alex Keating gets settled, we get a look at where he recently settled, right in the heart of Texas. I decided to take a trip around the U.S. to pick a new place to live. And I went to like seven or eight different cities by the time I was done, and Austin was the last one, and I thought it was just like a slam dunk pick for me as soon as I got here. On Wednesdays, I get live music. I can hear it from my balcony. The city's been really, really good to me. The first time I came here, I made a friend. <laughs> it's just hard to do as an adult. I don't know. How's it going, handsome? Yeah, all right. You all right? It's no good. <laughs> Fun, caring, loving, and always the guy to go to. Oh, yeah, I, I collect Abraham Lincoln shirts. So maybe I have like 15 of them now. He's a genius. I mean, I don't really want to give it all out. Having good neighbors, I found, is like one of the most valuable things to just enjoy your life. Being his neighbor is a privilege. That's all I can say. You've never been this nice to me. There's maybe like 10 units on this floor and like I'll hang out with six of them almost every day. Most of us don't even lock our doors, so sometimes these are just open. I don't know if this one's gonna be or not. This one is. A bunch of people just work out of here, but we'll just come over while they're working. Feel like I fit into the crew like they needed someone like me. He's not very good at chess, we usually beat him at that. <laughs> <laughs> you have a game of chess in you? He's spot really talking the whole time. Sp spot, spot, me a, spot me a bishop. These are like some of the smartest guys I've ever met. I'm just gonna start whacking pieces. Check. Isn't there like some kind of rule that like if I lose all my pieces to wash? Friendships built really, really quickly. Something I've said is it's cool like to come home, you see the people that you like, and you just feel better. All right. What have you had this morning? Huh? What have you had this morning? <laughs> yeah. What's <laughs> Alex. No, What's your name? Chan. Chan, nice to meet you. I'm Alex. I got a finger. <laughs> Ew. What'd you order at Starbucks? I need some of it. Starbucks. <laughs> Decaf. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hi, Melanie. Good to see Hello. you again. Hello. Look at that beard. You like it? I just said look at it. Yeah. You got a big mouth, Melanie. You know that? You can, you can pull it off. It suits you. <laughs> Everything suits me. Except the suit. I'll never wear that. Yeah, this is not my first time. I did it five minutes ago. Not your first radio. This chair's way more comfortable. I was really worried that this table was going to be boring. <laughs> so can I look at my cards now? You can. Okay. <laughs> Let me find fun. I'm trying to play a hand. Let me focus for just one sorry, second. Sorry. For just one second. Just don't be rude. <laughs> 
All right, I got you. Just relax. So rude. <laughs> Seriously. Wow, good cards. Wow. What's your name? Pav. Pav? Pav. That's not very impressive. My name's Alex, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Yeah, since you're so nice, hopefully. <laughs> wow. I didn't decide it myself. <laughs> Cost yourself money, not being <laughs> I think Alex is a breath of fresh air. It's nice to see some life at the table. This is the main event. Have a good time. It's poker, folks. It's supposed to be fun. No doubt everyone here, though, wondering what this table has come to. <laughs> well, they know about Linda, though. He's going to raise, and he did with Queen Jack, and everyone folds. You know, Linda's going to take all the fun out of poker if he wins every hand. Where are you from? Texas. Austin, Texas. Really, I'm from Dallas. From Dallas? Tough break. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dallas ain't bad. What's your name? Don't Drew. care. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding, Alex. Nice Drew. to meet you. What? Drew. Drew. Yep, nice to meet you. Much better than Pav. <laughs> it's P-E-R. Per? That's how you Americans say it. Per? <laughs> how do you know I'm American? Per? I could be Canadian. <laughs> it's true. So how are you supposed to you pronounce your name? Pad. Pad? Pad. With a rolling R. <laughs> Americans eight. don't really do rolling R. Yeah, I so. can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> he says, what's your name? Pear. What kind of hand do you have? Pear. <laughs> yeah. So are there two of you? Yeah, yeah. Me and my brother. We're two pear. That was, I, I, I want to withdraw that joke, okay? We'll, 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 we'll scratch one from the record, we'll do a new one later. <laughs> Sorry, Alex, the camera never blinks. Welcome back to Las Vegas, day five, underway at the main event as we approach 200 players remaining. 27-year-old Gordon Veo has an above average stack right now and an above average perspective on his life. Uh, my name is Gordon Veo. I live in San Francisco, California. Well, you both my parents are musicians. You know, they're very laid back, easygoing, maybe not run of the mill type. You know, they're just unique people who have a different perspective and uh, understand maybe, you know, there are different ways to be happy in life besides the traditional routes. And my dad's a very intelligent person and took a job making much less money than he could have if he wanted to because he wanted to do something that would make him happy every day. And that's something that he definitely passed on to me. Veo and Stacy Madison are battling after the turn. Gordon flopped trip eights. Madison sits with pocket nines. She bet 425K before Gordon raised it enough to put Madison all in. Veo mostly a pot limit Omaha cash player. Madison owns the World Series of Poker Dealers Academy in Florida with Michael and Robert Mizraki. Madison used to be in advertising, then became a poker dealer and eventually opened the dealer school with the brothers Mizraki. Big decision. Biggest lay down of my career right here. A good lay down, though. Biggest lay down. Not gonna show up. Can show. Guys are too good. I mean, I would have a. I would. They are now with a top ten stack. <laughs> Stacy with work to do. As Dan Coleman did, Veo celebrated a birthday just as the main event was getting underway. Nice pop to his stack. Both he and Coleman with top 10 stacks. Ryan Petroli, the top dog right now. Gail Bowman has been pretty quiet here. Kara Scott caught up with her before play began. The 10th place finisher in 2012, Gail Bauman, is here again running deep in the main event. What's it like to come back four years later and, and be doing this again? It's a lot of pressure because uh, you think, I don't know, when you bust the first time at the bubble, you say, oh, it was my one time. I, I probably won't be getting this again. And now I'm here. There's still a long, long way to go because 250 people, it, it's a lot. I mean, it's, a, it's, it's like a new tournament. So it's a long way to go, but I hope I can do better than last time. I like that. It's a new tournament. Mike. And the reality well, is every day is a new tournament. Away, Gail with Ace King. She has two master's degrees in English <laughs> linguistics and literature and in translation. She raises to 55,000. Calm down, lady. Pair Linda with Ace Deuce and seems to know that Bowman has him dominated. 
Two of my former divorce attorneys are currently living in Alex Keaton's beard. <laughs> Big neighborhood there. He folds. Drew Demansky on the button. 10-7 off. He cashed in the Millionaire Maker three straight years. Like the main event, those are always fields in excess of 6,000. This is his first main event cash. He really wants to play a re-raise to 140 with 10-7. Yeah, he's getting frisky with squad douche. Out of position here, Gail might be thinking about trying to raise and take it with a four bet. Ah, she doesn't. Nope, just to call 85,000 that she only knew. Heads up, Bowman and Dumansky. And it's top pair for Bowman, bottom pair for Dumansky. Bowman checks. Dumansky also cashed in this year's monster stack, another field in excess of 6,000. Cashed a lot at the World Series circuit events as well. He bets 155,000 with just the pair of sevens. Yeah, I think Dumansky is showing us that he navigates large fields by just plowing ahead. When you're aggressive, you aggress chips. Gale with top pair, just another call. Turn card now. Bowman now with top two. And she checks again. I don't know the exact math here, but I know that squaw plus douche equals squaw douche. <laughs> Dumansky chips in hand. Now bets 280,000. See, you three bet with 10-7 pre-flop, which leads to a continuation bet on the flop, which leads to a continuation of your continuation bet on the turn, which eventually, I believe, leads to the discontinuation of your tournament play. I can't believe I'm going to say this, but I think that made sense. <laughs> Gail with the call of 280. Gail with a check calling clinic. River card, it just keeps getting better for Bowman King's full now. Check. They both check. She couldn't get one more bet out of Drew. No good. Gail Bowman will collect the 1.2 million chip pot. Dumansky down to 55 big blinds. I see some of the pot. Where's the rest of it? Oh, wait, where, where's the rest of the pot? I see like 800,000. Just ignore him, Gail. When, when he's back in Austin, you'll be back in Ashford. Drew Domanski picked a bad time to bluff his way to a pot. Gail Bowman, the last woman standing in 2012. And this year, once again, inexplicably, very few women showing up at the main event. Out of 6,737 entrants, just 268 women. 4% of the field, and only eight females, 25 or under, entered the main event. Eight women total from the entire planet. 25 or under coming Gail. here. The knowledge of having negotiated her way through problem? most of the main event has helped her this year, no doubt. She's going to raise it up to 55,000. You can't grow the game if half the population is disenfranchised. And poker's too good of a game for women not to be streaming in the front door. <laughs> it's too easy. You are soft. Hold it around to the button. Jason Strasser with pocket jacks. Strasser, an engineering degree from Duke, born in New York City, now lives in Oklahoma City. And dare I say it, he prefers OKC to NYC. When he was an online monster, he would just ship it with the jacks, but just a call of 55,000. Jason McConnell, the big blind, 23-year-old English pro. He's from Manchester, former poker dealer. He's a little bored, so he's going to come along with 7-4. I hope he's got a backup plan. Three to the flop. Eight, eight, ace, top pair for Bowman, but she can't sit easy on the paired board. McConnell checks. By the way, in this entire World Series, nearly 70 events this year, women made up only 5% of the fields. Maybe they know something we don't know, Lon. Maybe they think men are involved, so I don't trust it. Come on, ladies, the water's fine. Check, check to Strasser. A paired board is like buying fish past its expiration date. Five of diamonds on the turn. Bowman picks up a flush draw. McConnell. Reaching for chips, not an awful spot to steal it. 128,000. Well, Makana picked up a gut shot and figures if nobody wants the pot, I might as well take a stab at it. I wouldn't mind a little probe raise here from Bowman. It might end the hand, and if you get re-raised, you just get rid of it. No muss, no fuss. A lot of winning options for Gale here. 
Those greens are worth 25K each. A call from Gail Bowman. Strasser gets out of the way, so we're heads up. Strasser right to fold to Jax, of course. River card. Four of clubs. Bowman's aces up are good. Well, if nothing else, mcconnon has got moxie. Moxie lawn always ends very well or very badly. Oh, wow. He put greens on top of greens. That's a huge overbet. 775. A massive overbet of the pot. Trying to take her off a hand like pocket tens, pocket jacks, or a weak ace. And Gale quickly gives it Good up. Morning, Props to McConnell. Nice play from the first timer. Note to every state legislature considering poker, this is a skill game. Thank you, Jason, for the example. And Norman McConnell had two things going for him. He was up against the weak ace and pocket jacks. <laughs> Most of the 226 remaining players in the outer tables on day five. It's a big moving day, both up and down. Dan Coleman, thanks to a flop set of jacks against Kings Up, just moved into the main event lead with almost 4.8 million. Coleman knocking out Joe Potts and collecting his opponent's 1.2 million chips. Hey out, 95. Potts, a software developer from Maryland, made the money, almost 37 grand in his first main event. Well done. And nobody at this table or this main event want to see this man getting richer. Yeah, Dan Coleman with chips is a scary sight for Poker Nation. And ear, butt, and mouth, the traditional street gesture that you have the chip lead. <laughs> Dan Coleman approaching 5 million chips, taking over the lead from Michael Novinsky. This man knows how to handle the big chip stack. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high Roller Bowl 7 champion. Oh yeah! Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Welcome back to the World Series of Poker main event, the annual Rite of Summer here in Las Vegas. Put up 10K and look toward November. At an outer table, Sean Deeb about to be a father of two, about to be walking out the exit door. Pocket sevens running into the aces of Jeff Hakim. Nothing in the flop for Deeb, nor the turn. The river gives Broadway to Hakeem, and Sean Deeb is done. Hakeem, 29-year-old hey, Pittsburgh-born Lebanese pro, knocks out the 30-year-old pro. And like most people these days, Sean Deeb goes immediately to the phone upon busting to do I don't know what. <laughs> Six caches for Sean at this year's World Series, including winning his second bracelet in a seven-card stud event. All right. You going to show him? Huh? You're asking everyone else to show him? Show if, so, if, if you guys start showing Show also, one. Show. Just one. <laughs> Shut like this. <laughs> oh, that's pretty good. Wow, that's wow. really good, actually. Not bad, huh? Awesome. All right, one more time, one more time, one more time. <laughs> that's really good. Can we check if that card is marked, please? No? <laughs> you might have that deck. That's awesome. That's Where'd great. you learn yeah, that? That's amazing. I did it, I did it really since good. I did it since I was a kid. Wow. So obviously I had a lot of women in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, when I was a kid, I, re I really liked magic. It was just a way that I could, you know, talk to people. And I, just, I, I really just like to, to, to make people smile. That's something I just really enjoy. It's something just, it, it makes me really happy. And it was just, it was just, it was an outlet for me. And I, I, I enjoyed doing it. I want to see that trick again. C can we see it again, Lon? I'll check with the director. Guys, can we roll that again? <laughs> Where is Antonio when we need insight? Can Keating make magic with Jack Deuce? Nope, he will fold like any normal human. Alex Keating has never turned magic into an income. In fact, he's never had a job. Alex says, I am what you call unemployed and unemployable. <laughs> he makes no bones about it. He wants to be the gatekeeper of table interactions. He told us he feels much more in control when he is the master of ceremonies. Did you get that impression, Norman? I get that impression. Lon. It doesn't matter what you're watching. When you're watching the best in the world at something, it could be curling. It's fun to watch. That's very true. Melanie Wisner trying to focus. Good fold. On the button. Pradiscus. Queen of hearts, nine of hearts. He has a bachelor's degree in finance from 
Vilnius University. The t-shirt came with a degree. <laughs> Tournament Poker Rule 6B, when it's folded to you on the button, you have to raise. 55,000 to Gail Bowman in the small blind. By the way, congratulations to English pro Victoria Corn Mitchell and industry professional Debbie Burkhead, both inducted to the Women in Poker Hall of Fame this year. Poker Rule 6C in the small blind. Don't let the button bully you. Gail with the three bet to 160. I like Gail stepping out here. She usually plays premium hands, and she might figure Proninskis is raising light from the button, so this three bet often would end the proceedings. By the way, 6B and 6C, you didn't give us a 6A. <laughs> you should know what that is automatically. Now, Proninskis, maybe to save face, is going to commit more chips to the pot. He does call for 105 grand more. Well, now I don't like that three bet from Gail. He saw right through it. <laughs> Heads up to the flop. A flush draw for Proninskis. Gail, king high, is the best hand right now, but not favored to win. Bowman with 90,000. I like it. She's shown some muscle. I do wish she'd size her bet a little larger. Excuse me, you're talking bet sizing now? That's like Justin Bieber talking pork futures? Sad to say you're 100% correct. <laughs> all in? Wow, talk about seeing through something. An all in from Proniscus and Bowman can't carry on. Irmas. <laughs> I have no further analysis. Proninskis wins the hand. Good luck. And increases his stack by a nice amount. Gail Bowman made the nice raise, had to make the fold. She takes a hit to her stack, but the disappearing act that amazed the table came from Alex Keating. There's another magician in town, Antonio. Welcome back to the main event. 6,737 players bought into this year's tournament, many of whom were playing for the very first time. Among them, restaurant chain owner Andrew Christoforo and math teacher Valentin Vornicu. A fish and chips guy and an algebra guy. I just can't see how a fish and chips background helps you in poker. I teach math and apparently I play this. My math skills come in handy at the other poker tables. I'm just taking it, you know, day by day, hand by hand. I'm not getting ahead of myself. Here to see me flip. It's exciting. I mean, I'm just trying to get by and win flips. I told you guys you're gonna come and see me flip. Flip good. You know, it's a marathon. There's still like hundreds of people in, so we're trying to keep it going. Made day five. First try. Feels good. <laughs> a lot of fun. Go. It's the first time playing the main event. That's why I don't know who's like who's who. Your shirt is on the inside out. Is it? Yeah. My shirt is up inside out. Got so excited in the yeah. morning. Day five, baby. <laughs> My name's Andrew Christoforo from London. Uh, I've got a small chain of restaurants. British modern, we call it. Fish and chips. Stop looking at me. You're putting under pressure. There's cameras and things. My game's pretty good right now. I've had a couple of deep runs in uh, in London, quite strong fields. And I thought, yeah, why not? We'll have a go. I plan on going deep. I'm Michael Novinsky from Vancouver, British Columbia. I've only been playing full-time for the last year. I graduated from the University of British Columbia. Once I got the degree, I was doing well enough in poker to support myself, so I was like, you know what? I'll give this poker thing a try, and I've been doing that ever since. This might be my only shot that I really have at the November 9 or making a deep run in the main event at all, so enjoy the moment, because I know this doesn't come by, you know, every so often. You have to beat hands like this. <laughs> Novinsky flopped the nut flush draw and is trying to eliminate Stephen Furman, who flopped top two and called all in. Two million in the pot. Novinsky turns the flush and it's got a royal flush draw. Furman with outs, but not what Furman needed, and he is done. You're lucky I played bad. I mean, I didn't play bad. Pay out 420. God bless. Huh? Furman immediately gets on the phone and texts, just got knocked out by the guy wearing a T-Rex t-shirt on table 428. Michael, the 25-year-old Canadian pro, held the chip lead briefly on day four. He's a bright light at the table, seems born with a smile on his face. And once again, as you see, finding his way atop the leaderboard. Back now to our featured table, 04 champ Greg Raymer sitting there with a slightly above average stack. Two other players about to go to the flop. David Pham with 6-4 of diamonds, two-time bracelet winner with over $9 million in tournament earnings. And Nathan Gamble, a 26-year-old Army executive officer. He's got pocket sevens. Pham with the pair of fours there and a straight draw. 
fam cousin of men the master win between them they have 128 world series caches amazing fam bets 80,000 with middle pair gamble plans to go to flight school wants to become a helicopter pilot i tried that for three and a half years no money in it and he's got an over pair to the board amazingly enough with pocket sevens and he raises it to 190,000. and fam says boom all in Gamble with a much bigger stack. And he makes the call, oh. and it's a correct call. David Pham at risk. Pham hoping a hand like a pair of sevens would fold. Gamble says, no, sir. Pham now in bad shape for his main event life. Quite a call from the Army officer. And thank you for your service, sir. So Pham looking for help on the turn. And there it is. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. Pham now in great shape for his main event life. All he has to do is dodge a seven. It was Pham who gambled, but it's Gamble who gets slammed. The jack ends the hand. David Pham doubles through Gamble. Hey, my nickname is the Dragon. That's how it works, kid. I win. Absolutely. The Dragon, Dragon Chips, Nathan Gamble, just below 1.3 million. These two actually with almost identical stacks. Gamble's emotions in order on that hand. I have to call? Okay, I call. I'm ahead. I can't believe he sucked out. Why did he play it that way? I hate poker. Nice hand, but trust me, that means I hate you and all that you stand for. <laughs> oh, very apt description of poker. So David Pham survives an all-in with a lucky four on the turn. Pham has played tournaments forever. His first recorded Hendon Mob cash came back in the dark ages of 1992. 12 World Series final tables. His first bracelet came in 2001 in shoe. Lon, do you know what shoe is? I know what a pair of shoes are. Shoe is horse without Raz. And why don't they just call it hose then? I'll bring that up at the next shoe symposium. <laughs> David back in action. His ace queen was re raised by Sohail Khalili with ace king. Fam called. Khalili at risk with the better hand. Fam again in bad shape. Khalili, a 30 year old Israeli born poker pro. Lives in Los Angeles now, and there's a queen for Fam. Now Khalili in desperation mode. Fam, a master today in going from bad shape to good shape. He should host a fitness program on TV. <laughs> Turn card is a tray. So Khalili with one more shot on the river. Well, here's where Khalili went wrong. He graduated from UCLA, then went to grad school at USC. That's a no-no in LA. I still hope he gets a king here on the river. River card, a deuce. Sohail Khalili becomes David Pham's latest victim. Well, two back-to-back -back deep runs here at the main event. He was 104th last year. Well done, Sohail Khalili. He wins over 42 grand this year. He cashed for almost 47 grand last year. So the Magic Dragon doing it once again at the main event. A turn four, then a flop queen. David Pham up over 1.8 million chips. The action on the Las Vegas Strip, always fast-paced. Same goes for inside the Rio at the main event. Seven days to get to the final nine. Floor, I have a question. Do you have a, do you have a genuine question or are you just talking? No, I have a real question. Oh. What happens if she, uh, you go punch her? <laughs> she didn't raise, so we'll, I guess we'll never know. Yeah. Pure hypothetical. If someone at this table were to punch someone else in the face, what would happen to the person that did the punching? You would probably be DQ'd from the... DQ'd from the tournament, period. He didn't say he'd punch you in the face, they, though. Do they still get the prize money that they earned? I wonder if that punching rule applies to the <laughs> broadcasting booth. <laughs> oh, I hope not. <laughs> All right. Pradenska's ace-queen off-suit made a bit rookie with a raise to 55,000. 55, no pair for pair. Anything to say, Alex Keating? I'd love to see Alex Keating heads up against James Harden. Imagine if those beards get tangled up. <laughs> well, if you're folding. Folded to Mike Ruan. He's got pocket kings, 28-year-old uh, poker pro me. from Hoboken, New Jersey. Plays mostly online. His younger brother, Sean, also a poker pro. Moran, not going anywhere. Is he going to raise? Yes, he does. 150,000 now to go. Strasser, ace seven of clubs. Strasser, one of many online legends. But I've got to tell you, many online legends a few years down the road are working at Radio Shack. <laughs> Strasser doing a little better than that. McConnell in the big blindfold. So back to Redis Pradenskis. 
Yeah. I hope one day someone looks back at their whole cards and they've changed to Uno cards. Oh, look, I've got a pair of Wild Draw 4 cards all in. <laughs> 95,000 more buys him a heads up match with Ruan and his pocket kings. Here's the flop. Six jack, four, not a complete whiff for Preninskis, but close. He checks it. Yeah, he'd better check with ace queen. It's ace queen, it's worthless. King, king, not so worthless. As you mentioned, Ruan lives in Hoboken, the birthplace of. Frank Sinatra. No, it's the birthplace of oh. baseball. First officially recorded game played in Hoboken in 1846. And yes, Sinatra was born there. Hey, so was G. Gordon Liddy. <laughs> 185 from both. Preninskis better be careful. He's the short stack at this table already. Turn card is a queen. Preninskis catches that queen. Probably the worst thing that could happen to it. Yeah, now he's in trouble with ace queen. Now he has top pair, top kicker, and it's an 11% hand. I rest my case for the 9,346th time in regard to ace queen. Good for him. He checked. Moran with pocket kings, and he lives in Hoboken. That's a powerful combination. Oh, he checks back. Tricky, sneaky check. River card, deuce of clubs, ace queen. Better be careful. Yeah, Preninskis certainly might think he has the best hand here. He checks again. Now Ruan with the pocket kings. He's got the bigger stack. And he bets enough to put Preninskis all in. Oh boy, originally I thought Preninskis might have been checking to check raise, but right now he better be able to find a fold here. But he can't do it. The Lithuanian calls all in with top pair. And in any language, that face says, I just got played. Boy, I would never call off all of my chips with ace-queen unless I've got quads and there's no straight flush possibility on the board. Ace-queen is a killer. Ruan right now with almost 2.8 million. You may be wondering why that riverbed worked. Antonio S. Van Diar and Phil Locke help us understand. Antonio, I need to know. Why did Ruan check his kings in the turn with all that wetness out there? That is a question that only Ruan can answer correctly. My best estimate would be that he wanted to control the size of the pot and not play for all of it, maybe, see what comes on the river and assess after. However, if I'm Ruan and I have two kings there, I'm gonna bet the turn and I'm willing to go with it no matter what. If my opponent has a set and slow played or has queen jack, so be it. It is what it is. The river. Pranskis has pretty much drawn his fate. He has to call. He made his hand. He has his hand, you know, and, and right. the way, the way uh, Ruan Well, played. it's not so much about Pranskis' hand. It's that Ruan checked back the turn. Could, and so he could have pair, draws, yeah. You know, with an ace yeah. kicker, you, yeah. you know, given your opponent check back the turn, you really can't not call the river. And so I think it's pretty standard. Even you would go broke there. The I, great Phil Locke yes, is going to make that I, call. I do like the fold, but I would call there, yeah. Michael making sure all the chips come his way before he takes a short break along with the rest of the field. Ruan making a name for himself tonight at the main event. The main event can be intimidating, but Canadian first-timer Mike Davinsky seems immune. The day could not start better. I started with 1.2 million, then secondhand made a set against aces and got my stack into double up, more than double up to 2.6. Then I the table broke three hands later. I got moved to the table I'm currently at, and it's just been smooth sailing from there. I just can't lose a pot, and now I have, I think, over $5 million. I honestly have a can't, but the feeling is indescribable right now. I feel like I'm living the dream. We've got an all-in and call. Two-time U.S. Women's Chess Champion Jennifer Shahade with aces. Her shove called by Jasty Kumar with queens. And now a set of aces for Jennifer. Yeah. It's your turn. A lot of sweat coming. Things could happen. A lot of sweat coming. Uh, Shahade in great shape for the double up here. Jack of Pops is dead. Jack of Pops. Another oh, hard no. things are happening for Kumar. <laughs> Any heart but the three. The river card is a heart. Kumar goes runner, runner, flush. Shahade's set of aces, not enough to keep her in the game. Runner, runner, hearts, takes her out. Brutal. That's the best thing about chess. There are no bad beats. Her winnings here, second only to the six-figure score she got for winning an open-faced Chinese pineapple high roller event in Prague two years ago. So I lose one of my redhead dream team, Adam Friedman. 
John Turner and Melanie Wisner still alive. And incidentally, Jen Shahade and Melanie Wisner both graduated from NYU. The Blinds at 15 and 30,000 with a 5K ante. And we have lost the 1K chips. Finally, that hurdle has been passed in the main event. Gail Bowman. Her life focus changed with the birth of her daughter 13 months ago. She limps with King Queen off. King Trey of Hearts for Paralinda. How long does a beard like that take? Six months. Jeez. I mean, I shaved no this morning. No way. <laughs> you can't grow that six months from scratch. No chance. Put some money on it. Really? That's clean, clean shaven for Thanksgiving. What, what month is it now? I wear Facebook friends so I can verify this. I don't take pictures every day. Uh, but it's close <laughs> enough. I should be able to see some clean shaven picture of you. Right? Or like at least a little smaller beer growing. What's the longest you've grown it? This is it. Linda every with a raise, now been. back to Bowman. Right now. She told Poker Listings, if she were an animal, she'd yeah. be a cat. If she were a color, she'd be blue. If she were a famous figure, she'd be Einstein. And if she could have a superpower, she would be invisible. I think everyone would love it if you had that superpower. Wouldn't mind seeing you disappear. <laughs> Bowman did not disappear after Linda's raise. She called for 65,000 more. Both come up empty. Bowman with the check. Linda calls himself a soccer analytics nerd. Actually, he calls himself a football analytics nerd. But his football is our soccer. Either way, you put it, I don't like it. Bowman's check plays right into Linda's strength. He bets 90,000, less than half, more than a third. Who's the gent on the other side of Gale? He's been growing that hair longer than Keating has been growing his beard. <laughs> He's the guy on the cover of all those romance novels, I think. <laughs> a call from Bowman with two overs. She's got the best hand, but Linda's making her work for it. Neither pairs up. Bowman checks again. Linda has watched Moneyball five times, he says. I think that's a problem. Wasn't that good? Exactly. Flush draw for pair Linda. 190. Almost half the pot, 190,000. He's used his big stack very effectively, and Gail Bowman folds again. Well, if you're not going to win the hands where both you and your opponent miss, it's going to be a long day. Bad news for Bowman, good news for Linda. Linda with almost 4.4 million. Bowman feeling a bit helpless at the moment. 1.65 million. This is too expensive. I'm not it has been a very good day for Per Linda, who took some time out on a break to give us his analysis of this table. Yeah, I got a guy to my left who didn't start at the table, but he came quite quickly, and he, he's talking a lot and like having a, a good time at the table, so that's fun. I, I usually don't talk too much when I, when I play, um, but I enjoy his, his chatter. We have played uh, one level day five. Um, I started with 1.8 today, I think, and then instantly flopped the full house on the first hand and went up to like over three, and then I kept winning pots, so now I'm over four, so it's feeling great. What he certainly knows is that sometimes the guy who talks the most at the table, like Alex Keating, is actually the tightest. Paralinda having a good day. Underneath the bank of lights next door with just 20 big blinds is Johnny Chan. All those chips seem ready to move as one unit, and they do from the button with 8-5. Let me say this about Johnny Chan. There are so many iconic figures in the history of poker. Amarillo Slim, Doyle Brunson, Stu Unger, Phil Helmuth, and so on. But he's Johnny Chan. Nobody else is Johnny Chan. And that's what's going through the small blind Jeffrey Chang's head right now with King Jack. He does fold, and the big blind Shankar Palai with pocket tens makes the call. Chan technically has Palai covered, but only by one orange chip worth 5,000. Well, Chan on the button, pushed with 20 big blinds left and hoped to pick up the blinds and annies. But Palai, a 2007 bracelet winner, has pocket tens. Here's the flop. Chan a flops gut a gut shot straight draw for a sweat. Chan went first, first, and second in consecutive years at the main event in the late 80s. And now during the poker boom, he has cashed four times in the last nine years. Norman, it just doesn't seem right that a 10-time bracelet winner could be knocked out by a single bracelet winner. A blank on the turn. Chan needs a seven on the river for a straight, or he's going to be very, 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 very short stacked. <laughs> Add another very, I think, to that. The river card, five of clubs. Chan pairs up, but it's okay. not enough. Well, Shankar Palai is the one who doubles up. Chan left with 5,000 chips, while Palai up to almost a million three. Well, Chan just with one 5K chip. 
He's got the chip and a chair. Jack Strauss won the 1982 main event with a chip and a chair. Johnny Chan down to the minimum. He will likely be heading to the payout cage soon while the rest of the field keeps dreaming of that $8 million first place prize. Back when Chan won the main event at 87 and 88, first place money was 625 grand and then 700,000. So Johnny's all in with 9-6. There is a side pot between the pocket fours of Palai and the Queen Jack of Christopher Hanks. And here's the flop, Hanks with top pair, Chan with middle pair. Palai does not improve. By the way, if you make day five of the main event and you're sitting at Johnny Chan's table, you're sitting pretty in your poker life. What a thrill. Ask Mike McDermott. Pillai checks. <laughs> Hanks now with top pair, reaching for chips. That's 95,000. When Pillai won his bracelet in 07, the final table included Phil Halmuth. That's sort of a thrill. All right, so Hanks wins the side pot after Palai folds, and now looking to take out Johnny Chan. Chan with 10 bracelets tied for second all time with Doyle Brunson and Phil Ivey. Hanks wants the story of knocking out Johnny Chan as well as his chips. Deuce of diamonds, no help to Chan. Chan also final table at the main event in 1992. Right now, he's got to have a nine or a six. The river card, the Good. eight of hearts. Right. Hanks will oh, take guys. it, Good luck, everybody. and we say a quiet goodnight to 10-time bracelet winner Johnny Chan. You just knocked out Johnny Chan. Why don't you ask him for a selfie? Johnny couldn't write another chip in a chair story. Well, yeah, it's card debt. I mean, uh, I got five, 600000 with the button and just uh, figure it out. All I need to be two more players to try to steal the pot, but unfortunately, I had to pick up two tans. Anything else, I would have won the pot, but... He had a hand, he had to call, so uh, that's me. That's the end of me, buddy. <laughs> Maybe next year, all right? Chad was a big part of building this game. The field loves to see him in action. We will see you next year. Johnny Chan. Welcome back to the 2016 World Series of Poker main event. We are well under 200 players remaining, and it's that man, Dan Coleman, in second place right now with over five and a half million chips. Yo. What up, G? What's going down? Grinder sweating digitally. What's going on? There's, he's still, they're still tanking over there. The guy's tanking. That was indeed the grinder. Michael Mizraki in FaceTime form checking in on his friend and business partner Stacy Madison with top pair. She's jousting with Will Kasuf, who turned a straight flush. 225,000 from Madison. 225,000. Still going to keep bluffing me? <laughs> you know I like to gamble with the nuts, right? With the redraw to the coconut. Or the monkey nuts, whatever the absolute coconut. He has the absolute nuts. Not sure what the coconuts are. <laughs> you must have the ace of hearts, right? You got the redraw? Not, 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 not redraw, not not. Kasuf used to be a lawyer and he was a natural litigator. Boy, can he talk. I've never seen two people. Like anyone How many miles is it so from here to Hollywood, you know? That's right, you know. Just, 70, he called two Tony like twice. Like 270 miles from here to Hollywood? Like, like big oh, all right. Tony, Tony was so convinced. Sasha tanked for another 2.7 minutes with the Hollywood here. Uh, he's actually in the six, so he asked to switch from the one to the six. You want to gamble, young lady? Yes or no? This is what he does. You know I like to gamble enough, right? Maybe like two more queen out there. There's so many of them. Yeah, the, the one versus Tony Roberto. We're going to gamble? Yeah. Let's gamble with that. So I'm winning. all in. Yeah, he has Madison well covered, so this would be for all her chips. Just five seconds. I don't think you got the heart. It was unbelievable. You haven't got the heart to call. You got it, you got it. But now that I'm all in, tell me what you got, and tell if I want you to call. I'll be honest. No shame in talking, now. Get my chips in good. You got a flush, good luck to you. Talk is entertaining, but it is her action. If she wants to talk, fine, but maybe she'll pick up something from his chat. Ah, oh, right. 7-9-10 Jack Deuce. I got it. I got you, B. I got the nerves. I'm all in. All my chips. So I like, yeah. I got it, We've both been completely owned by you. You You're good to go. You're good to go. All right. I got it. No, you got the draw, but I got the best hand. Okay, well, I'm willing to gamble. You're I can't that, call with that. that, that There's over one million in the pot. You only got like you six, seven behind. No, I have 900,000. Yeah, I'm willing to gamble anyway. I can't call. 
I don't want to be a fish and just call and see, see the river. You goes. probably got me. I'll get my chips in. I was ripping river if I didn't get there anyway. Unless you, you made a flush. What do you have? I turned top, top two on a flush four. Yeah. yeah, and I had the king, king jack with the king of spades. What do you think I have? Flush. Top pair? Of course. And a half? Against you, of course I'm rivering the flush. King of hearts, queen of hearts, one of that? That's so sick. You might be winning at the moment. I'm winning to gamble. I think I'm winning. I think I might be wrong. He's definitely not winning. If, if you're winning, you're happy about the race. I mean, I have to call. If you're winning, you have to call, right? Do you think you're winning? If you if you think you're winning, you have to call. Yeah, right. That's I don't right. know what she has anyway. She's got top pair with a hard draw. Yeah. Like, Let's go. But anyway, you might be even be ahead. Why would I want to gamble at the main event? Well, I've got a big heart. That's why I got a big heart. That's why I shipped it. I've got no heart yet. I just, I just shipped it like a boss. I got a big heart. Big heart. You might have the ace of hearts, but I got the big heart. Heart of a lion. No guts, no glory. All or nothing. Let's gamble. Let's gamble with the nuts. Kasuf with the nuts trying to talk Madison into a call. Let's go. If you got top pair and a heart, you, you got a call. You're probably ahead. Well, if you got the best hand, you got a call. I understand, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay. I mean, I'm, a, I'm not 100% sure that I'm. Do you want to gonna... phone a friend or 50 50? <laughs> You're not going to give me time to think? Or anything? No, you could, you could think as long as you like. I mean, yeah. <laughs> Play, you playing to ladder up or you playing to win? I'm playing to win, so I play for all. You, yeah, but you're not gonna you're not gonna win with 178 players left. You know this, yeah, we'll right? But I can win it's this, a well, long, long. It's game. a long, long way. But I'm willing to gamble. You're probably ahead. If you got top pair and a heart, you're probably ahead. But I'm willing to gamble. I'm willing to gamble. Sorry. I'm not gonna put my tournament life on this. One. I think I have the best hand. Smart ball, ace, queen. That's it. <laughs> wow, wow. That's it. One pair. You're gonna call it one pair. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Can I, show, can I show the cameras without showing the players? Kasuf put on a show, but That's in the fun. end, he does not get what he wants. Madison with a game saving laydown. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah! Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. The coconuts, the coconuts. The scamble with nuts. Yeah, right. Scamble with yeah, right. I just looked at you like, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm <laughs> Unbelievable. I like that line, you want to phone a friend. That's going to be with the nuts. That's no, that's it. a classy thing to do. That's the absolute coconut. Unbelievable. That's going to make it, make it, make it, make it just through. gamble. Put it right up. Kasuf's silver tongue is yeah, becoming gotta, the talk gotta, of the room. No, not, well, not they're my fans. <laughs> Back to our featured table. Another notable talker sitting here and Alex Keating. Action on the man with the hair, Yaroslav Yaskovich. Yeah, yeah. 31 years old. <laughs> world Quite traveling welcome. poker player. Oh, hang on, wait, I can do this. I can do this. Durian? Is that it? No, Durian. that's sorry, right? Yeah. No, is that you're welcome? You're, you're welcome? Yeah, yeah, nice. Durian, right? Yeah. Yaskovich with one of the shorter stacks, almost 1.2 million. He raises to 70,000. Yaskovich was 198th at the 2009 main event. Pair Linda, queen eight. Top stack here gets out of the way. Keating with a couple of sevens. Keating momentarily gets quiet when he picks up a hand. 70 or 75? He wants to join the party. That's a call. The thing about talkers like Alex Keating and Will Kasuf, it's entertaining until it's not. Sort of like you. Sort of like me. <laughs> Melanie Weisner in a big blind with King Six. And with only half the chip stack, she sat down to at the start of day five. She'll call. Melanie has 24 World Series caches, but she has yet to make a final table. Three players will see this flop. King 4 7, yikes. Two players flop sets. The other top pair, Wisner with a pair of kings, checks. Yaskovich with a set of kings, Keating just with a set of sevens. Yaskovich travels to places for six months and then moves on. He looks like he travels to places for one six one months five. and then moves on. <laughs> he does indeed. One, one, five. The short stack of these three temporarily, I would venture. He bets 115,000. Keating now with the underset. Keating grows his beard for six months at a time and then moves on. 
And Keating thinks he loves that flop. And he does raise to 265. Wisner got into a lot of trouble flopping a pair of kings on the very first hand of day five and lost a lot of chips. I don't think she wants to go down that road again. What were you thinking, Melanie? And she does fold lest she gets injured here with the flying chips. Yaskovitz sitting with the best hand here and he wants to maximize it. How do you say your name? Yes, yes, yes. Take your cards. Go like this. It's hair versus beard. Good. Usually when they scrunch up their eyes like that, they're never calling. No, no, I'm safe. See, I would just shove right after Alex says that. It'll look like you're doing it out of spite. Yeah. Got out a whole bunch of chips. Well, Yaskovich doesn't have a whole bunch of chips left, but he's still sitting on at least 30 big blinds. Not a call, but a re-raise to 425. Both players might think that the other is on a diamond draw, but it's set over set, or in Keating's case, set under set. Keating Call it. calls to cut it off there. Big pot, over a million one. Turn card now. Cue the drama part two. Keating picks up a flush draw. Yaskovich checks. Yaskovich might fear the flush got there, or he might be inducing Keating to bet so he can check shove. Keating does have a flush draw. 320,000. To paraphrase our buddy Antonio Esfandiari, there is no version of Yeskovich folding here. Keating has him out chipped almost three to one. one. All in for 685. And there's no version of Keating folding here. A check raise all in is called by Keating. And Keating will see he's in a world of hurt. Set over set, always inflicts maximum damage. Yaskovich's English vocabulary has been reduced to two words, no diamond. Well, Keating can knock out Yaskovich with any diamond or a seven. The river card is a diamond. Yaskovich is crushed. Bro, I'm so sorry, man. And out of the main event. Boy, just like Jennifer Shahade, Yeskovich flops top set and busts a runner runner flush. Wow, Alex Keating over 4.3 million. Yeskovich finishes 174th in the main event. 42 grand almost matches all of his previous World Series cash. Should have known better when he made a small raise on the flop. And just fold it? <laughs> Not with the backdoor flush. <laughs> Not with the backdoor flush. To be the talk of the town, you don't necessarily need to be the talk of the town. Main event! Table full of fish, this is just what I wanted. This will be embarrassing. Focus. Unless you're Alex Keating and Will Kasu. What's your name? Have. Have? Have. That's not very impressive. You want to me? <laughs> no, I don't think you got the heart. You haven't got the heart to call. But you got a big mouth, Melanie, you know that? Then it's essential. Yeah, that's good to talk, isn't that? We're gonna have a problem. And I got no glory. Day five of the World Series of Poker main event continues with Keating, oh, right. Kasu, oh, right. and 167 of their not so close friends. What's your name? Don't care. Blow not. Let's gamble. Point when the main event heats up, and it's here on day five. Much of the heat coming from Will Kasu. He has nine high, but has put Stacey Madison in a quandary, yeah, a decision for all her chips with pocket queens. Well, there's over 600K in there, so I want you to go. You cannot say anything that influences the action of the hand. Saying what's in the pot, you cannot say. You keep saying. You cannot say. You cannot say what's in the pot. Anything that influences the action, you all cannot these, say. Like, right. he's like, okay. doing, he's like breaking all these rules, and they're not giving you a penalty. Well, not doing anything the decision's on you, young lady, and you don't need to like, go I on mean, about it. I'm just. World Series officials on scene to keep it within bounds. I want you to call. I told you. Good luck to you. But I did say I'll keep it friendly because it's you and it's a friendly table. If you fold and show, I will show. I'll keep it friendly. But I want you to go 100%. Don't bust that with the whole camera crew watching there. This will be embarrassing. You don't put me on this hand, I tell you. I can't say what I've got. 
Are you do not put me on this hand. I'm, I'm not talking about my hand. How come his hand is still live when he... I'm just saying, you don't put me on this hand. That's all I said. Action's on you. Yeah, I know, but I... Action's on you. Isn't the rule talk to influence action? Can't have to have to have to he has. He's telling me he wants to I will be having a discussion with this gentleman after this hand is over. At that's this fine. point, there's nothing that's out of line, but we will be having a talk. That's fine. All I said was, I'll keep it friendly. If she so folded the show, I will show. I'll keep it friendly. That's it's a friendly table. We're just having enjoying now. ourselves. Let's stop talking until okay. his hand's over. That's fine. That's friendly. I mean, why wouldn't you want to bust me? I'm not trying to bust you. Sir, oh. I'm not going to ask you again. Okay. Just two hands ago, these two had a similar showdown. Kasuf check shoved on the turn with a straight flush, talked up a storm, and Madison correctly folded a pair of aces. I'll set our shot. I'll keep it friendly. You're going to show me a worse hand. What does that mean? I'm not. But this is your last warning. You're going to get a penalty. If she you she could talk to me. I said nothing. She's not talking to you personally. She, she just She's talking out loud, okay? You will receive the penalty if another word comes out of your mouth until the, uh, this hand is finished. Will's talk is fine until they tell him it's not. Now LaFleur says he cannot talk. Turned him by director Jack Ethel right on Kasuf's shoulder. Well, now he's talking without speaking. He's pushing it. I'm going to handle this one. Thank you, sir. I need a lot of time here to make a decision. Will has put Stacy all in. Stacy has the best hand. Hey, Floor, how about a clock? We all have to Table mate Mitch Garshowski has called the clock on Stacy. If you have an act, you will get a 10 second countdown. If it's kind of zero, your hand will be good. You know, it's a big decision. All right, all right, slow go. Usually I'm in favor of calling the clock, but she has been under siege most of the time from Will Kasuf. I would have given her a little more room. The floor person does have the authority to deny a clock request. I'm going to ask you real quick the next I didn't time. Say you, what? If you okay. make one more gesture like that. Okay. I'm just trying to be friendly with the lady. Okay. Okay. This is not friendly. Okay. okay. I, I, don't want to, I, I don't want to see. You, I don't want to see you move. You okay. and I are going to have a conversation okay. when this happens. Okay. 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 Nine. Eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. She falls. You want to see it? Yeah, I want to see it. Sick bluff. Turn the double gutter and missed. Never mind. Nine high like a boss. No heart. Big heart of a lion. Nine high like a boss. So we have a little rule at the World Series of Poker that says you are not supposed to be disrespectful yeah, no, too, but I don't, at the table. I almost did call, too. Doing. Right. Okay. Buckle heads up, select like speech play is loud as long as you don't But wait a minute, but wait a minute. Okay. You taunted her by these motions, did you not? Did, that, that wasn't was, taunting. No, 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 no. We said before you came over, sir. No, listen right. to me. The guys were saying that you cannot just say anything. I said. 100% taunting. 100% the way that you were treating what, her. What, I was, what, what did you think that I was trying to say to so, her? So, so listen. Can I, can I ask you that? So, what do you think I was trying to say to her? You were trying to get her to call to make a decision. No, 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 no. You weren't here before the other course that way. I told her. Uh, can you hear me out, please, one second? I said, I'll keep it friendly. If you fold and show, I will show. They, and the other gentleman said, if, if you have one more word out of you, you have a penalty. So without saying it, I, I said, you show, I'll show. That's, that's uh, all uh, Hey, Dave, this guy's on a one-round penalty until he gets back to the small one round. blind. Okay. One round. All right, excuse me, sir. So, okay, okay. you're getting ready to get two rounds. Okay, so listen listen, listen to me. You're, you're done explaining. Okay, so the best, best, thing, best thing you can do is you can go to the side of the rail. I hear one more thing. It's two rounds. I understand that. I just wanted to explain myself. That's all. Okay. I apologize. It was a long time. We were all ready to do it. Yeah, but who cares? It's my turn in my life. I am surprised at the severity of the penalty, and it looks like Will wants to go for two rounds if he doesn't leave the table. His stack will be blinded off while he's gone. No, that didn't affect me. Oh, no, I, that didn't affect me. Do we have a penalty box here? The Sin Bin. Will will have several minutes to cool his heels. I will never do that when your tournament life is on hand. I will never do that. How much, how, were you close? Did that rush you? 
Did you want 10 more minutes? Yeah, I, d I wanted more time. I did want more time to think about it, obviously. Uh, I didn't want seven seconds. Was that, was that out of line? It was for her yeah, tournament yeah, life. Yeah, this is my opinion. Well, and that's the, the point. You just sat down. She was, she was being peppered with questions she from the beginning. Trying to make $8 million. It was just, People it was go a lifetime to try to make $8 million. It wasn't, I just she wasn't just sitting there thinking. It wasn't just quiet sitting there thinking. She was under duress. She was clearly in a very difficult spot, being made even more difficult by this, you know, actions of this guy, whatever, that were pretty out of line. And the whole floor was planning on doing something, but they can't do anything mid hand, obviously. They can't kill his hand or do anything like that. So they handled it perfectly as well as they could have, but like, you know, she didn't have a lot of time. I mean, that's a really, really tough spot. A lot of the time was interacting with him. Everyone was just like, ignore him. Yeah, right, exactly. I apologize, and I got the impression well, from these now, guys, maybe wrongly. I was I was already guys thinking that in someone my head, do it, and I then did it. I so had a number really, in my head, and that number still what hasn't what hit yet. I, I, I did indicate it. If they cared, they would have called. He indicated to me that it was time. You guys, my life. I mean, I had a number. I had a number in my head that I was going to call the clock, and it still hasn't hit. I mean, all right. I mean, I was getting like 13 minutes. I was going to give her five, six minutes. Let's cut to the chase. Norman, we have to talk about the elephant in the room. Your thoughts on the unique Will Kasuf. Nuts, nuts, nuts. <laughs> As in, am I nuts for being entertained by him? Sure, he might start another American revolution against Britain, but it might be worth it. Hey, we can't complain about nine guys sitting around the table in hoodies thinking about how to merge their ranges, then get all hot and bothered when someone wants to bring some life to the game. Some feel, though, he's crossing the line as if he has no boundaries. Well, if he's crossing the line, he will pay for it with a penalty or with bad karma. In general, talk is good for poker. Battle the wits, a mind game. Sure, his talk can tilt. It's a great weapon. It's his tongue versus your tolerance, sort of like our relationship. Never back home. Come on, England. Oi, oi. Here we go, the brick crew here, and I didn't say a word, I said, you show, I'll show like that. So, and then Jack Eppel came over the TD, and he was like, I want to you know, have a word with you and everything, I'll up his hand, right? And then, then someone else calls a clock, she's been tanking forever, and she just keeps eyeballing me and everything, so I'll keep trying to do the same gesture. And then eventually she's folded, and she opened, she opened uh, folds Queens, she's Queens. I said, oh, are you going to show her then? Said, oh, go on, that's good for the game, show the six star, nine high like a boss. Oh, was sick, showed it up, nine high like a boss. And uh, yeah, she was like, oh, fuck's sake, screwing. And so then he came home and said, right, you've got one all penalty, taunting a player. I said, what do you mean taunting a player? I said, I said sir, the way you've got one all penalty, you keep on, you're going to have two all penalty. So sick, you know. That's the whole point of speech play. I might have misread it also. It seemed like she was really upset with him and arguing about getting him the penalty and wasn't really interested in her cards. And she was folding every step of the way anyway. Like, folding I, every step of the way. Now that you see my hand, do you think I was folding every step of the way? Now that I put four, half of my chips and stuff. I mean, you, you weren't even watching the hand, obviously. I, I didn't say I got the impression right. That's how it seemed to me also. That, no, I mean, I just, and she's even nodding that that was a reasonable yeah, thought. As a person on this table gotten involved in that situation, I would have let it play itself out. But you, you got yourself involved in it. All right, back at the table in question, minus Kasuf. Free rate or the Oliveira, just three bet with King Jack suited. I can survive this. I can survive anything. Best thing is for best thing is for everybody. I've actually played with this nice red-headed lady a lot over the years. I'm a local, usually known as a good character who is very fair. Justice served maybe for Madison with pocket aces. She's all in. Stacy's still hot under the collar, and pocket aces should cool her down nicely. Back to Oliveira now with King Jack suited. He makes the call. Madison in line for the double up. Two black aces. King Jack. Stacy's friend Kevin Taylor likes it. Stacy looking to regain her footing in the game. Please, 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 please. <laughs> All right, here is the Ace. flop. Oh, my, trips for Oliveira. King, King on the flop. King Jack versus two aces. My goodness, it's a main event nightmare for Stacy Madison. Yeah, take a picture. That's a good one. Oliveira, a Brazilian entrepreneur, 47 years old. Need an ace to win. Wow, that's so sick. The six of hearts. The last river card Stacy Madison will see in this main event. But probably you fold after that. I just threw flat that jacks. It's got to be the worst $42,000 cash of her life. Yeah, aces versus King Jack. He flopped King King. Marvelous. 
one all, one over penalty, eh? Taunting a player. Leave me out. Can't. How many more? Five more. Marvellous. Taunting our player. They don't know the meaning at all. It's the whole point of speech play, right? What's the point of having speech play? You can't, can't say anything to the player, can't ask them any questions. Taunting the player. One orbit penalty, yeah? Marvellous. Welcome to the World Series of Poker. I want you to call. I thought we You don't put me on this band, I tell you. I'm not trying to bust you. I'm going to ask you. I'm just trying to be friendly with the lady. That'll... This is not friendly. Huh? Okay. You want to see it? Nine high like a boss. No heart. Big heart of a lion. I was 80 to 90% calling over the hand, but all this table talk and this distraction about him telling me what I had and doing things that were penalty worthy, um, it kind of affected my decision because never in that spot was I folding. So now it put me in a position now with 500,000 to go all in with aces, which is great because I could have doubled up. But also I might not have lost that hand because the guy maybe never calls when I have 1.5 million in chips. So that really affected the whole tournament there. But. Um, Listen, you know, I survived as strong as I could for everybody at home. Um, and this is a great tournament to play, and thanks, guys. Take care. A gracious Stacy Madison takes her leave. If you do that, I'll do that. Basically, if you fold and show, I will show. I was trying to repeat what I was saying without saying a single word. That's, that, that was my point to you. So there was no malicious intent or anything like that. Okay, there's no taunting. That's all. I'm not that kind of guy. Well, you, I don't you might not think so. My, my interpretation, the other four's interpretation, the other player's interpretation, I, I think sure. we all kind of felt like you were trying to get under his skin. And no, while that's part of poker, right. there's a right way and a wrong way to do it in the way right. that you were doing it. Was, a, we're, we're was, in a, was a very disrespectful way. I understand that, 100%. I don't that's it. That. It's no different than a referee coming in saying, I want to see a clean fight. That's fine. You, know, you can't that's kick fine. the guy in the in the you-know-whats no, if uh, you're yeah. supposed to be using your hands. I appreciate that, but in terms of what right. can you say when your head's up in the pot, surely you're allowed to say a few things without disclosing content of your hand. Is that yeah. correct? Yeah. Go Am back and look at the definition of taunting. I was, I was going to ask you, right. Jack. That's why All I'm going to let you use your smartphone. Okay, thanks very much. Nine high like a boss. Kasuf continues to serve his penalty as we go back to the feature table. And speaking of speaking, the top dog there is Alex Keating. But he does have talking chips over four million of them. I think I might be the only one that's not annoyed by your talking by now. <laughs> Seems like everyone else is weared down. I think only I think only Jason's like really actually annoyed. <laughs> I'm the action. No, not you. Oh. It's, it's this Jason. Action Jason. Action I'm the Jason. annoying one. No, the one that's annoyed by me. Oh, annoyed. Yeah. We need, a, we need another Jason to fill the seat. So we have the good, <laughs> the bad, and the ugly. <laughs> Which one's not here yet? <laughs> the good. <laughs> Alex Keating, Austin, oh, Texas poker player. Yeah, yeah, no, it's over. We're done. <laughs> Moving on to a new subject. If you missed it, you're going to have to just watch no, it. I want to know which one I am. The bad one. Or the ugly one. Or the ugly one. <laughs> I'll take that. I don't know, it's close between you two. <laughs> take out the hat. It's a good hat. Debatable. Yeah, the small blind, Drew Demansky. Oh. And he will call for 15,000 with the blinds at 15 and 30,000. And the big blind, New Jersey pro Michael Ruan. Ruan first started playing poker in a friend's basement. The main event should be in a friend's basement. That's where everyone was always playing. Blind versus blind situation. Ruan and the big blind does raise to 120. The big blind in the mood to mess with the mind of the small blind. And you should never believe a raise in this blind versus blind situation. Domanski does call the Dallas Pro in for another 90,000. The flop. 10, queen, Check. 10, two diamonds. Dumanski with a nut flush draw checks. I got to say, Ruan got very little of that flop. <laughs> I think he's got different things in mind rather than pairing the board here with nine deuce. Ruan with live career earnings at about what the current payout is. Bets 90,000. The big blind still in the mood to mess with the mind of the small blind. Never believe a bet in a blind versus blind situation on a paired board. So Dumanski makes the call. Flush draw doesn't hurt either. Turn card, a seven pairs Dumanski, and he'll check. And Ruan now thinking about what his bluffing budget is today. Coming up a little short now. Looks like he's a shutdown operation swagglefoos. The jack hits neither. Demanski's best with his two pair. 
Yeah, but the wrong flush got there for Dumansky. Plus the straight got there. You know, I've never trusted players in plaid. It's a rule I've lived by my entire life, and it hasn't let me down. <laughs> So the door's open here for Ruan to continue his ruse. And wow, he drops a bomb of a bet. 600,000 on Demansky. Big bet. Ruan's making it look like a bluff. Because you know what? It is a bluff! <laughs> and you should never Big believe bet. a huge over bet on the river in a blind versus blind situation. Dumansky gives it up. Good bluff, good bluff. Nine high like a boss. Well played from the big blind by Michael Ruan. Let's go to an outer table. The flop is out, and Norman, it's set over set. Our Fish and Chips first-timer, Andrew Christoforu, with a set of kings. Dan Healy with a set of eights being tested for all his chips. I call. And Healy calls it. Healy, a graduate of Western Michigan, probably my favorite university in Michigan. So Christoforo in great shape to take all of Healy's chips. The turn card is a deuce. Healy, the 30-year-old local pro, sees the riding on the felt. Set over set, takes out the 30-year-old pro. Another deuce on the river. So from set over set to boat over boat, but the result is the same. Healy is gone. Second straight year, Healy has cashed in the main event. Christoforo adding 1.6 million new chips to his stack. Unlucky, man. Indeed, extremely unlucky. A brutal beat runs Dan Healy out in 160th place. Welcome back at the Rio. Day five is turning out to be the Will Kasuf show, but there are a number of interesting undercards. And Norman, once again, we're set over set. It's officially an epidemic. Yeah, somewhere Justin Schwartz has crawled up in his bed with the covers on tight while wearing a hoodie. That's Kui Wen with a set of tens going up against the set of jacks of Max Silver after the flop. Here on day five, Silver says the last time he felt this much adrenaline was when he stopped a guy from trying to break into his house. An all in and a call win with the bigger stack. Silver set for the big double up. This is going to be Max's 10th cash at this World Series. A terrific British pro living in Ireland. Win, a 39-year-old Vegas poker player and gambler. Nine of clubs on the turn. Win needs the last 10 in the deck to knock out Silver. The river is an ace, and it's not the saving card. Max Silver with a massive cooler. We win is still in, but he's got only 1.4 million chips. I figured that's not yeah, to tell you that. I was trying right, to understand if it was I, 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 I wouldn't mind it hearing that one. <laughs> I think you're right. Silver with nearly 6.3 million, one of the strongest stacks in the room. Back at the yeah, feature table, sorry, Michael sorry. Ruan on the phone, no doubt texting with his family back home. Same story as like, you know, 80% of people my age uh, started playing in high school and never have really had a real job. Always been playing poker. Um, I love it. I, it's, you know, it still challenges me and I still have a lot of fun playing it. So I want to give a shout out to my brother too. I have a brother who also plays poker. Um, Sean, a, a younger brother, but he's taught me so much. He's, uh, he's amazing. He's amazing at poker. He uh, got knocked out day two and was on a flight four hours later. <laughs> We're like texting back and forth and I'm calling on every break and whatever. I feel bad because I can't respond because I'm playing, so I'm trying to do like both. And at the future table, we have to step off. So without him, I wouldn't be here, that's for sure. Michael right now in the big blind with ace queen of spades deciding how to handle the under the gun raise from Jason Strasser with ace jack. Blinds up to 20 and 40,000. Michael calls for 50,000 more. Experientially, I've got to tell you, ace queen is an underdog to ace jack. Here is the flop and a queen in the flop. Ruan is best and he's going to check it. Strasser now runs a hedge fund, caption partners. Hedge fund guys love poker, and poker guys love hedge funds. As you can see by the percentages, Strasser drawing just a bit thin, but does put 90,000 into the pot. Like me, Michael Ruan has never been near a hedge fund. <laughs> and with the best hand, top pair, top kicker, Ruan makes that call. Turn card, king of hearts, a Broadway draw now for Strasser. Ruan checks again. Strasser wearing one of only three baseball caps in the world that say caption partners. <laughs> it's a very small hedge fund. Strasser has only 15 big blinds behind, and he doesn't have a hand yet. He's one of the original online monsters. 
Oh. Well, the 15 big blinds behind are now in front and in the middle. How much is it? You count it? Strasser semi bluff shoves. It's for about 30% of Ruan's remaining stack. And when Ruan spreads his hair over his scalp, it usually helps him figure out turn bets. Don't ask. Strasser doesn't play many tournaments these days, but he hasn't forgotten how to put pressure on his counterparts. Well, you put this much pressure on, and it is hard to make the call. Ruan not happy about these developments. But does call. Ruan has Strasser on the hook with one card to come. Like many hedge funds across America, Jason made a dubious bet, and it got called. Strasser needs to make Broadway, or he'll exit stage right. Only a 10 will keep Jason Strasser's main event alive. The river card, Strasser's yeah. done. Good call. Good luck. See ya. Classy exit from Jason Strasser. Credit to Ruan for making that call after Strasser put all his chips in the middle. Now we may never know why Jason's fund is named Caption Partners, but we know he's a classy guy. Michael Ruan with the knockout. He's now a force in the main event. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Welcome back to the 2016 World Series of Poker main event. Just 18 tables remain inside the Amazon room. And one of them, poker pro Sorel Mizzy at risk of elimination. Chris Kusha called with ace queen. Mizzy shoved with pocket sevens and 23 big blinds. Kusha, a New York math professor. Here is the flop. Bingo, bango, bongo. Kusha drops a full boat on Mizzy. <laughs> That's some pretty easy math for Kusha. Mizzy now drawing dead and eliminated, and quads for Kusha. Only four aces. <laughs> All right. Mizzy out and 157. His 36th World Series cash. A nice boost to Kusha's stack. Over 3.1 million now. 79 big blinds. Oh, and look who's coming back. We're back in. Showtime. Showtime. And there's no business like show business. All right. This is it. Small blind special straight in. Did I miss anything? What have I missed? What have I missed? Well, what are you? Afternoon. Afternoon. Your Welcome friend, to the table. Your friend got eliminated. She got eliminated. That's unfortunate. That's unfortunate. Same. It happens. It happens, yeah. Kasuf oozing with compassion there. Small blind. What is it? 20? 20. Well, the leopard didn't change his spots. Will hits the ground running. To a featured table, one-time chip leader Michael Novinsky just turned a king high straight against Dietrich Best, a Russian-born, German-raised, Austrian resident with a Broadway draw and a pair of jacks. Novinsky, that's 110,000. Fast 2015 bracelet winner. Lonnie said he's Russian-born, grew up in Germany, but now lives in Austria. He did indeed. I'll tell you, if he ever moves to Maryland, he will never move again. <laughs> 110,000 from Fast with his draw, and now Fast with that other jack has trips. He better be careful against the straight. Yeah, that card should get Novinsky paid off. Novinsky with a ton of chips, over 6.4 million, bets 185,000. Fast with just over 2 million to start the hand. Dietrich once worked as a pizza delivery driver, and ironically, he was not fast. <laughs> so with the trip jacks and the lavender chips in hand, that is a raise to 640,000. Really? I don't know about that raise. With that board? So many hurtful moments have begun on paired boards. I have a pretty good hand to call with. Yeah, I don't think he's folding or re-raising. Like a really good hand to call with, so I think I just, I'm just supposed to call. And you just pray you have three pair. I call. Good call. Call. Three jacks. 
<laughs> wow, what a hand for Davinsky. Fast, I think, maybe thought he won the hand, Norman. Well, he loses about 40% of his stack there, mm -hmm. and Davinsky again has yeah. the biggest stack in the room. Davinsky now with 7.3 million. All right, let's check in with our fast-talking scoffball, Will Kasoop, in a hand with high-stakes pro Jason Less to Will's right. What's the maximum score with three dots? Does anyone know? The maximum score with three dots? Anyone play dots here? No? The maximum score with three dots? No one knows. 180? You know how they say it in the dots? 180! <laughs> Must be a that was a long way to go. <laughs> 180. Oh, dude, we got it through. We got it through. We had a gut shot. We had a gut shot. We'll show it. We'll show it. There we go. Gotcha. Ten was coming. Ten was coming. Occasionally, he's just on the other side of obnoxious. You gonna play dots in the US? No one plays dots. Max score: treble twenty, treble twenty, treble twenty. One eighty. There you go. You learn something new every day, right? Maybe it's just a British thing. That's how they say it in the dots when they score max score. One hundred and eighty. There you go. Now you know. A full moon over the Rio, and that can mean only one thing. Will Kasuf in rare form on day five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four. Will in a hand with pro Jason Gooch. Will just river trip aces. Make it nice and colorful. Kasuf appears to be entertaining himself. One, two, three, four, five. Easy game, huh? Three, four, five. All right. Kasu could put the Dalai Lama on tilt. <laughs> Gooch is a 31-year-old Texas poker pro playing his first main event. Gooch calls with aces and kings, and he will lose that pot. Gooch takes it in stride. Will just Thanks. takes. Jesus, one, two, three, four, five. That's it. Always got it, I told you guys. When I bet it, I got it, man. I got it. I always got it. The coconuts. I think Jason Les has had enough. He might be forfeiting his stack and leaving. <laughs> Back at the feature table, we find Ryan Goindu. He is a retired actuary living in L.A. Originally from Trinidad and Tobago, a nation so nice they named it twice. <laughs> He's got some decent poker credentials, but only 22 big blinds. Alex Keating with pocket eights under the gun. Once a year, Keating does a silent 10-day meditation camp. I believe in statistical improbability, he is silent for 10 days. I'm guessing he's not taking those 10 days during the main event. Keating limps for 40,000. Folded to Melanie Wisner. Only two of my redhead dream team are still alive, Melanie Wisner and John Turner. Melanie down to 30 big blinds. Action on Jason McConnon with Ace King. He could have been a redhead dream teamer, but I didn't know him. Plus, he might dye his hair. McConnell, 23 years old, an English pro in his first main event. This will be his first ever recorded cash, a raise to 145. Pair Linda, 27-year-old Swedish pro in the big blind with another pair. He studies economics and statistics at the University of Stockholm. I believe they are the Blue Hens. Linda with now his patented stare and getting it right back from McConnell. Linda with some of the Lavenders, a re-raise to 435. And Keating with the best hand here. But those pocket eights shrink when it's been raised and re-raised. So hard to play under the gun. Boy, when he's quiet, he's like a different person. Uh, this looks like a very reluctant fold to be. And there they go into the muck. So now back to McConnon. McConnon with 3.1 million to start. Linda has him out chipped by over a half million. And he'll make that call. Actually, some folks might have four bets shoved there with Ace King. I like that McConnon wants to see a flop. Heads up. Two very strong stacks here at the featured table. Here is the flop. Seven, eight, five, and Keating sits on the sideline, tortured by his set to be. It took all of Keating's restraint not to scream out when he saw that flop. But it's Linda who has the monster. He flopped a set of fives. The pair has the action. You know, Linda is still in school at age 27. I think it's because he spends too much time looking at other students. 
<laughs> but I got to tell you, that three bet of his preflop might have saved his main event because if he doesn't re-raise, Keating calls, and this would be set over set, and Linda would be buried. 375 from Pear, making a pretty normal continuation bet, but with a huge hand. Well, if I'm ace king, I just muck it right here. I mean, just muck it right here and, and, and enjoy your multicolored scarf, which actually matches your hair quite nicely. <laughs> McConnon with two overcards to that board, wants to see a turn. He makes the call. People do not give up a lot of chips in the middle easily. Wow, another seven. Linda with fives full now. McConnell drawing dead. A check now from Pear Linda. Linda hoping McConnell was calling the flop to maybe bluff a later street. Let's see. People have been known to do that with Ace King. The English pro checks back. River card. Deuce of hearts. Yeah. Deuce on the river. Hey, that's a real action card. <laughs> check, check. Full house. Huh? Full house. What? Full house? Wow. Alex Full can't house. hold his tongue any longer. Congratulations. You're out of the tournament if, uh, if, you, if you didn't raise a pocket ace. Really? I swear to God. <laughs> wow, that's really, that's crazy. Linda stacks the winnings. McConnell counts his losses. If I raised, you're probably flat. You're out of the tournament. A simple re-raise. Pre-flop saves Pear Linda from near extinction. You don't want to see him turn up that hand. <laughs> That's done. You raised my blind, we're definitely not friends. All right, let's use words you know I know, OK? <laughs> Number one, worst sense of humor. Wow, good cards. <laughs> I want to withdraw that joke, OK? We'll, 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 we'll scratch one from the record. We'll do a new one later. So far on day five, Alex Keating doing more talking than chipping up. Kara Scott spoke with him earlier. So Alex, how much of your table talk is by design to get under your opponent's skin and how much of it is just because you really enjoy telling the jokes? It depends whether you're, ta depends whether you're talking uh, today or like mm -hmm. any, any random day. I'd say like on the average, it's maybe like 30% uh, by design and 70% just smoke and mirrors. Uh, some tables are more, some tables are less. I mean, I like to talk because it's fun, but there is a little bit of strategy I put into it too. What do you think the table is thinking of you right now? It looks like everyone's kind of having fun. There's one guy who I wasn't sure he was uh, having too much fun, but um, he, he, uh, he just finished. Alex Keating, Jack Knight of Diamonds from the cutoff. It's been folded to him. As I said before, if you're at a table with Alex, it's entertaining until it's not. Sort of like you. Have we been down this road already? <laughs> with Jack Knight of Diamonds, a raise to 85,000 from Keating and the big blind Farhad Jamasi with 5-4 of Diamonds. I'll show one if you fold. Jamasi doesn't like the sound of that. 49-year-old from Orlando. It's far out, right? Yeah, you can call me Fred. Easier. Fred? I like fraud. Wow. I only bet this much. That's a massive re-raise. 820,000? Into a pot of 190? Oh my god. I mistake. Did he I'm not sorry. mean that? I want, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm sure. I wanted 220. Mm -hmm. I got the wrong one. Sorry. Oh. The sick thing is you promised to show one this hand. That's the cool part. I swear I made a mistake. It's honest. You did make a mistake. You would have yeah. got paid, you got paid off otherwise. Yeah, 220. Man. Ah. Why did I grab that? I see, I see, I've seen that trick before. Maybe he's a world-class grift artist. You know it's on camera, right? Show your cards to the camera. I already did. Huh? I already did. You haven't even looked. You said you'd show one. You, we had a deal. We had a contract, verbal contract. Pick. This one. Ace of spades. Turn it over, Melanie. Pick. <laughs> <laughs> Not the ace of spades. <laughs> Good job. Good job. Well done. Wow. Go to read. Go to read. Two people. <laughs> what the f happened to my game? <laughs> Well, no, really, with the chips, I made a mistake. Yeah, I, no, I, I get up there. I believe you now. <laughs> no, sir. Yeah. Okay. Jamasi just made a lot of new friends at that table. Next door, chip leader Michael Novinsky flopped an open ended straight draw. John Greenbaum has a pair of tens and bet 185000 It has been a day five magic carpet ride for Novinsky, but he is behind the amateur right here. 
Davinci can afford just about any bet, and he will raise it now to a half million. Greenbaum, 37-year-old New York City hedge funder, won his main event seat in a charity tournament hosted by Hank Azaria. Ivy League chap, Penn undergrad, Columbia Business School. Big deal. And he calls for 315,000 more with his leading pair of tens. Navinsky on the draw. Ivy League, Schmivy League. Go Terps! Over 1.3 million in the middle. Turn card now. And Navinsky does it again, turning the king high straight. Greenbaum, at best, can chop the pot. Navinsky turns the nuts. Sometimes good things happen to nice Only. people. And he puts Greenbaum all in, and a snap call with the tens. Greenbaum all but gone. Yeah, that was an ugly insta call from Greenbaum for all his chips. Greenbaum going to need a king to make the same straight and chop the pot with Novinsky. Wow, he's looking shell shocked right now. The river card, tray of spades. Greenbaum comes up empty, out in 146 place. They always take their water. Novinsky can do nothing wrong. The 25-year-old leads the main event here on day five with almost 8.7 million chips. He can't miss. On the left, Las Vegas jewelry designer, Louise Francoeur. She's all in and ahead with a pair of queens against the pocket nines of Jason Gooch to her left. Louise, one street from a double up. Only a nine would bust Louise Francoeur. The river card is the nine. Gooch Rivers a set to send Louise Francoeur to the door. I mean, she's a delight to play with, former gaming consultant here in Las Vegas. Lucky me, lucky him. Yeah. It's not lucky you after you hit the queen. Lucky you hit the queen, man. Good luck, everyone. Thank you. Her second straight main event cash. Nice answer. Any nine balls about? Ping. Nice pickup wow. for this Texas native. He told us making day five is his greatest poker accomplishment. Kasuf can't help but chime in. For Louise, it was unique. The table was a little bit crazy. We had a player that was putting players on tilt very successfully. Um, he got penalized for it, but talking is part of the game, and you can't let it get <coughs> under your skin. But it was fun. It was a great experience. I got rivered, unfortunately. It's the way it goes, and every year I go further and further, so... Next year, November 9. <laughs> Quick check around the room reveals some talented pros with chips. James Opes nearing six million. Paul Volpe recently cracked five million. Paul Volpe's in this tournament? Damn, that's trouble for somebody. He can play. 2014, big one for one drop champion. Dan Coleman has 6.5 million. At least he stopped eating his earbuds. Kasuf back in action with Jack High, second best to Tony Gregg's King High. Tony Gregg's here? That's trouble for somebody. He can play. Kasuf loves to say like a boss. Gregg's nickname is the end boss. 185. 185,000 from Kasuf. Kasuf bluffs at it, and Gregg's only got King High. King High's the coconut stuff. Yeah, my chips in good, you know what I mean? I can't say what I have, obviously, before I get another penalty. Nice Better come up the best thing. Tony calls. First bluff of the day. First bluff of the day. Kasuf was caught. <laughs> King high. Not bad. Like a boss indeed. Maryland's finest gets the best of the British barrister. Tony Gregg struggling to build a stack here on day five. Hold it, no pair. I'm a hell of a call. Well, he had one pair. The bluff gone bad quiets Kasuf momentarily. That call by Greg on the river made even more impressive because of his short stack. And some caffeine, maybe. All right, back to the center ring of this poker circus. Any wagers on who's going to speak first, Norman? <laughs> McConnell has the action, and he folds. I'm going to punch you if you raise my blind. Ah. <laughs> who's Alex? Can, uh, can, can, oh, come on. I don't think you can do it for me, but... Will you show him if he folds? I should, yeah, I'll show you. I got a good hand. Pair Linda in the small blind with two jacks. Well, finally, Linda does not have oh, a good he's hand. Gonna he's going to fold. I feel Rock like I have jacks. Uh, I don't think so. It I is a like pair. You want to bet? I'll bet you he folds. I'm, I'm, Maybe not pre-fold, but. Yeah, it's he's not like a machine, right? Look at him. Alex is in the Once big blind. Once he takes the position, he's not folding. And Pear is not folding. A raise to 125. You remind me of that guy from Two Minute to Two. <laughs> well, Alex Keating has 20 World Series caches to his credit. I don't think he got most of them, 
by defending four deuce suited in the big blind. Egos can be dangerous things in poker. He calls for 85,000 more, though. Alex wanted a walk. Now he's going to be taken for a ride. Here is the flop. 5'10 king. Pretty good flop for Jax, save for that pesky king. Linda usually doesn't act until he looks at his opponent. There we go. You look nervous. You look nervous. He's going to check. We'll just give him, we'll give him a minute. If, if Alex were a weather caster, I'm not sure he'd be very good. <laughs> uh, he's not going to check. Pair Linda with 4.7 million. Heating, three and a half million. There's a bet of 150. I hate to nitpick, but why did he take out all of his orange 5,000 chips if he wasn't going to use them? And a snap call from Keating. Alex calling with four high, like a bearded boss. Turn card another 10. Bluffers make millions on paired boards. Just a reminder, Parrot Linda will not act until he looks at his opponent. I bow to you, poker savant. <laughs> <laughs> And OK, if you're going to look at him this long, you've got to buy him a drink. <laughs> now you're just digging up old comedy lines. <laughs> check. A check this time from Linda. Oh, wow. A million? a million? Wow, indeed. Keating had a plan. I don't know if it's a good plan, but he just massively overbet the pot, putting one third of his stack in. Oh, and now they've made eye contact. They are locked in like Alexander Hamilton and Aaron Burr on that fateful July afternoon 212 years ago. I thought you were talking about the Broadway show. Linda has to fall to that massive bet. You can do it. Show one. Can't. Show one. Mr. Show one better show one. Yeah. yeah, I mean. All right, I'll make a deal with you. You show one in the future, you show one in the future, and you show two in the future. He's already, oh. he's already I'll show you the whole. I'll show you the whole. He's hand. already shown one. Oh, wow. He's I'm not sure I want to see it. Queen nine. I'll just punish myself. You can see one card. I get to choose? Of course. That's why I threw it right there. Queen nine. Come on. Every time they show the one, board. it's a four. There was a four on there, though. No? No. Five. What a bluff. <laughs> Can't remember. King 10, 10, 5. Honestly, I never looked at the board. I just knew you were weak. That's a bad read, sir. Did you really fold a king? No, you didn't fold a king on no. the No, he folded aces. You probably folded the gut shot. You got him off a gut shot. Yeah, really. probably. Gut shot's a really good hand in Sweden. Those Northern Europeans play a crazy game. Linda's got a healthy stack, but it's not top 10 worthy. Navinsky on top, Coleman in third, Kasuf in fourth. Ryan Reese! Greg Merson is the world champion! Nothing quite like running deep in the main event. Jacobson completes his masterpiece. The key goes wire to wire. I've been there. Here we are on day eight. When we register, we know it's a long shot. But today, today, we know we can win. Yeah, dare I say this, it hasn't been that hard. I'm just on it, feeling really focused. Hope to win this. $8 million sounds pretty good, too. As you get deeper and these staggering sums of money become nearer and nearer and nearer, it's awesome to be a part of it, honestly. But this is not the time to get ahead of yourself. It's time to close out day five. The continuing coverage of the World Series of Poker main event, day five, a major stepping stone on the way to $8 million. Poker pro Alex Keating hoping to take the bracelet and cash back to Austin, Texas. I just can't get over the beard. And when he travels abroad, that beard has its own passport. Melanie Wisner started day five with promise, but is in need of a comeback. She's not winking at you, Lon. That wink had a mailing address of Norman Chad, Los Angeles, California. Mike Davinsky's first main event going well. No one should have this much success this early. It makes the rest of us feel awful about ourselves. I know you're not crazy about leaderboards, but we've got to give the people an idea of what's going on. Davinsky, the chip leader, fellow Canadian, Griffin Benger in second, and your boy, Will Kasuf in third. Will Kasuf is good for poker. You heard it here first and probably last. Two, yeah. That's it. The book comes out next month called Gambling with the Nuts. You make the, you make the final table, yeah, think how many you're going to sell. Sorry? Right. If you make the November 9, think how many you're going to sell. Yeah. Will you come in real if I make the November 9? I'll come. If my friend's on the final table, yeah. I'll watch it. 
Okay. <laughs> We've gotten a taste of this feature table. It's a good one. Your boy Kasuf with a lot of chips at the center of center stage. Kasuf can play sheriff at this table. No one in shouting distance of his stack or his ability to talk. High stakes pro and Kasuf's foil is Jason Less to the right of the new mouth in town. A uh, middle seat on an airplane is a bad seat, but I think Jason Less would take a middle seat to Timbuktu over seeing to Will Kasuf's right out chipped by nearly five million. Speaking of chips, three and play. The orange 5K up to the lavender one. 100K. Average stack right now holds 49 big blinds. The blinds are at 25 and 50,000 with a 5K ante. Jason Less, very strong pro from Costa Mesa, California, ace four of diamonds. And he was great when I heard him commentate on a World Series final table live stream this summer. He even made David Tuckman sound good. <laughs> Raised to 110,000, and that seemingly offends Kasuf, who sits there with 8 6 off. He's been a lightning rod at this main event, mainly for his table talk, but he also takes a long time with easy decisions. Eight, six off in early position. That's an instamuck. 34-year-old London lawyer turned poker pro. Then again, where are these guys going? None of them have jobs. Take your time, Will. <laughs> 250. Okay. A re-raise to 250 with eight, six off. I apologize to Will. He still could have three-bet bluff quicker. Gooch and Jesse Cohen on the button shorter stacks. They'd probably prefer to play a little quicker at this stage of the game. Well, Kasuf here with the most chips, the most chatter, the most game, the most gall. Back to the original Razor. Playing the rush, get in the hands right now. Running good today, maybe not tomorrow. Does Les have a built-in scarf in that ensemble? Wow. Get my chips in good. Right. And Les Hello. does fold. I don't want to see an extra king, put it that one. These are all breathing a sigh of relief that you finally started talking. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was thinking the same thing. I'm not even on 40% of what I'm used to. I've only had three hours sleep. If I had a good eight hours sleep, that's it. I'll be relentless with a capital R. And Rupom knows it. Rupom knows it. Every hand, back mental mode enabled. Pow, 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 pow. So this is Kasuf with only a 40% charge. Wow, if he makes day six, watch out. But he does have some obvious poker skills. I wonder if he's as chatty playing billiards, backgammon, and chess. You don't hear a lot of trash talking in chess. Yeah, <laughs> you guys are lucky that I didn't get much sleep. This is me on three hours sleep. Less under the gun with pocket deuces. Hoping to get a good eight hours tonight. Back to some carnage tomorrow. Same raise. Will with a real hand. Deja vu. Machine. Should have straddled, then we don't know you got began. <laughs> Kasufa, former lawyer, practiced commercial litigation and dispute resolution and talked a lot, I'm sure. <laughs> well, he re raised with 8 6. 260. Oh, 10K more than the last hand. Gordon Veo with pocket eights go into the muck. So Kasuf's three bet makes a better hand fold behind him again. At least he has a hand to go with his tongue this time. Tony Gregg, World Series bracelet winner, folds. Gorky Oliveira, ace jack of spades in the small blind. Brazilian entrepreneur, ace jack suited, pretty good hand. But I would entrepreneurize my 38 big blinds in another spot. Nice fold from Gorky. Not three bet you like. Don't think I'm making a move. This one, if you phone show, I'll show. I'll keep it friendly. Even for the TVs. Again. You want to see it? Oh, if you showed, I was going to show. Less again lays down the I'll best hand, but hard to play pocket deuces there. Not three bet you like that. I mean, there's something afoot there. First hand's 250, second hand it's 260. I had a better hand this time than the previous one. 10K better? Yeah, 10K better. Two anties better. Big hand. With Mr. Kasuf at the feature table, this is threatening to become the Will series of poker, though there are 137 players left. But for better or for worse, one of them seems to steal the spotlight, Norman, no matter where it's aimed. You want to talk Will Kasuf? Let's talk Will Kasuf. He's equal parts exhilarating and exasperating, invigorating and infuriating. He'll play a mind game with you so often, eventually you'll lose your mind. You want to get in someone's hair, get under someone's skin, or get someone's dander up? Will Kasuf's your man. You want to rattle someone's cage, rub someone the wrong way, or ruffle some feathers? Will Kasuf's your man. Hey, you want to make someone's hackles rise? Will Kasuf's your man, and I don't even know what hackles are. Most of Kasuf's poker experience comes from UK events. His top cash, 133 grand at the 09 Irish Open main event. 
<laughs> Will and everyone here guaranteed over 49 grand in this main event with 8 million going to our champion to be on November 1st. No way. Even the button's holding. What have I done? To Jason Less in the small look. blind. No shame in folding. No shame in folding. You know those boxing dummies that you hit and keep popping back up? Yeah. Meet My Jason Less. Texas hold them, not fold them, right? <laughs> You gotta hold them all the way to the river. Less just calls. Kasuf and the big boy. Let me have a look. Let me just see if it's still there. Yep, still there. Same man. Oh. You looked at both, right? You must have looked at both. I've looked at both. Kasuf and the big blind with 9 8 suited. This could be quite theatrical. I can't slow play. That's a raise to 150. Not making a move. If I had a crap hand, I'll just check and see a flop. I'm not sure if Will's captive audience at this table is bemused or fatigued by his unending lounge act. Underscore captive. <laughs> Need to get lucky if you call. Actually, he happens to be correct here. Uh-oh. The fuse has burned short on Jason Less. He's going to play, but for how much? That's a re-raise, Norman, to 450. Wow. Wow, that's impressive. It is. I like that three bet. Wow. More moves than Mick Jagger. Les has put Kasuf on the spot. Like a boss. The limp check raise, eh? The limp check raise, oh, a move. Norman Chad School of Poker upper level course. What do you do if I come over the top now? Can you ship it? It's one thing to talk like this. It's another to be aware of how you're viewed because of it and take advantage. You haven't got any more lavenders, right? Please fold. Please fold. <laughs> uh. <laughs> All right, just in case you're bluffing. 300,000 more. They'll see a flop. Oh, you erase me, then you look. Wow, that's different gravy. Oh, impressive. All right, now, here's the flop. 7-5 versus 9-8. King, 6-7, all spades. Middle pair for less. Kasuf open-ended. Why don't we have a look together, see if we've got a spade on. Might save some time for the cameras. <laughs> oh, it's lucky. Well, lucky, I guess, he has a straight draw. Pretty good flop for less, other than not having a spade. Jason Less out of position. I don't know if Less is thinking about the hand or simply savoring the silence while he has it. Wow, really? He checks, though he probably knows what's coming. Check to induce or check because you missed? Given the preflop action, that check is usually a monster or giving up. Well, I think I was ahead preflop anyway, but. Kasuf with a piece of that board. Five seventy-five. Less again with the best hand, but given his stack size, this is getting pretty deep for him. Like I said, I got the best hand at the moment. Pre-flop, on the flop, fairly confident. Kasuf started with over five million more than less. Get my chips in good, man. You don't believe me. That's when they usually get all their chips in. They got one out the door and their favorite to hit it. But you're a nice guy and I don't want you to. You already tried that joke earlier. Yeah. Remember we pointed out that you've been to the door quite a few times? Yeah, I haven't been in the door, in the, to the door to, in this tournament, have I? Well, well you could be if you uh, get involved in this bolt. So I got the best down, 100%. Jason Good entered ball. the dungeon voluntarily uh, and now exits. I was gonna come over the top pre-flop because then, but if I re-raise you pre, then you ship it, then we're flipping. Mm -hmm. I'm sure we're flipping. But I'm protecting my hand now. Sorry. Less getting schooled by the speech play savant. Oh, what's wrong with this dealer? Oh, wait, stay, stay here. 5K. <laughs> tip. Not enough? 25K. Take the tip, take the tip. The dealers have tips here? 25,000, not enough? Wow, wow. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. Here we're back. Come back, five minutes, five minutes. Go to the restroom, come back. Cheers. Will Kasuf winning pots and testing his table mate's patience as well.
the best poker content on the internet. Your super high Roller Bowl 7 champion. Oh yeah! Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. Day five of the World Series of Poker main event. Let's get to an outer table, a serious CIP, Norman. That's cooler in progress. Screen center, Wojciech Ryzyczka, who just hit eights full on the turn, but on screen left with quad deuces, Jared Blesnik, who has checked. Ryzyczka has turned the nut full house. He's drawn dead to an eight. The only good news for him is that he can't lose all his chips because he has more than Blesnik. Ruzicka from the Czech Republic bet 430 and a quick call from Blesnik. And Blesnik makes sure he still has quads. Yeah. Ten of hearts on the river. Blesnik has the action. His stack about two-thirds the size of his opponents, and that is 500,000. Ruzicka shoots Blesnik a modified Ushka Ushka look. Uh, how can that be? I have pocket eights for a full house. I'll even double check. I mean, if I'm Ruzitska, I'm absolutely certain I have the best hand. I'm absolutely certain I'm going to Disney World. He made a World Series final table last year. This will be his first main event cash in five tries. Meanwhile, Blesnik inside is impatiently going, come on, buddy, raise! <laughs> raise! Ruzitska. looking at all the possibilities out there, probably ruling out quad deuces or pocket tens. And a lot of lavender coming into play. There is the race, the 2.1 million. Oh, that <laughs> yeah, that's how you turn over quads. Wow. Yes. Blesnik Helmuth liked the way he jumped up and quickly turned over the nuts. <laughs> A full and complete double up for Jared Blesnick. You can't blame Blesnick there for his reaction. It was a big hand, but I apologize to Rizitska. New Yorkers, man, are loud. Blesnick will now sit with, well, if he ever sits again, 7.9 million. He's really not sure what to do with himself. <laughs> All right, we head back now to the featured table, but before we get there, let's check in with Kara Scott. William Kasouf sustained a penalty earlier on day five for a little bit of table talk that went just over the line. I spoke to his friends who were on the rail. They say they don't think it phased him at all. In fact, they don't expect it to have slowed him down even a little bit. He's really well known in the UK for his table chatter and also for some bluffs, which made it onto the TV screens. And his friends say that he knows a number of languages, so knowledge of English isn't even required for him to try to talk you into or out of a hand. Thanks, Kara. As we learned about Will, his passion for table talk and poker did not come traditionally. I went to a private school, had a good education, had a good upbringing. I've got to thank my parents for that, really. When I finished school, I uh, went to University of Leicester to study law, did a law degree. Started getting into poker, got introduced by a couple of friends back home. The whole bluffing and everyone's like showing bluffs and doing making moves and this and that. You want to gamble, young lady? What do you have? Depends what you have. Psyching your opponent out and outplaying your opponent, outwitting your opponent, and that's what I like about the game. I got it. I got you beat. I got the nerds. I like the whole psychological aspect of the game, getting into my opponent's mind, reading my opponent's well. You yeah, haven't got the heart to call. <laughs> they say how you play poker depends on your personality. I'm just trying to be friendly with that lady. This is not friendly. An information seeking game, so what better way to get information than physically? communicating with your opponent and getting the information you need. I don't want to see you move. You and I are going to have a conversation okay. when this okay. Okay. It's the power of deception, effectively. Nine high like a boss. I always got it. The coconuts. Putting players on tilt. He got penalized for it, but talking is part of the game. Maybe it's just a British thing. Taunting our player. They don't know the meaning at all. Marvelous. Welcome to the World Series of Poker. He famously annoyed and bluffed Vanessa Selps at EPT London a couple of years ago. Man, he can drive you up the wall. Action on Tony Gregg, 29-year-old pro from Washington, D.C., Queen 10 of Clubs in a race to 110,000. Gregg is a boss, won the 2013 one-drop high roller bracelet here for 4.8 million. Oh, not yet. Kasuf with 8-6 suited. And the button. Kasuf with 8-6 can be a lethal combination. <laughs> 260. Pressure, pressure, pressure. Kasuf goes from picking on one high stakes pro to another. Tony Gregg now gets the Jason Less treatment. Kasuf and Gregg have been playing together for hours. Gregg's the real deal with over 11 and a half million bucks in earnings. 
Me and Tony. Talk to me, Tony. He will not be talking to you. <laughs> Tony, Tony. I'm not through betting line. I don't think I've got Le Bouton. And I'm just abusing it. Legit hand. I'll just flat go if I had a half decent hand in position. It's first half three bet, you're right? I think it is. I wouldn't do it live if I'm in position anyway. I just call take a block, right? Three bet me two hands in a row. What does that say about me? Well, I had three bet you to protect my hand and get these guys to fold. I can't just flat call and invite all these guys to come in with Jack Deuce and King three and Queen five, you know? Got to protect my hand. I don't think I need to hit. I think I'm winning already. Wow. There's a wake-up call. Count, please. All in will shut down the Will Kasuf Happy Hour Cabaret Extravaganza. <laughs> like a boss. All your chips, huh? All you can eat. Okay, he's just wasting our time now. This is the part I don't approve. Wow. <laughs> One million? One million six hundred and five thousand. One million six hundred and five thousand. Wow. Big shove, right? Why would you shove so much? You had such a big hand, you'd come over the top, right? Now four bets, six fifty, seven hundred. Actually, he's right about that. It just looks weak when you shove. Yes, it does. But well, you don't want me to call. Do you want me to call it? Yes or no? Simple question. You can bluff me if you like. Say yes if you know. Tony says, read my lips. Okay, I'm gonna let this go. I'll see it on TV. I'll see this one on TV. Maybe. Wow. wow. Nice hand. Tony's Thanks. friends call him the end boss, and he brought Will Kasuf's winning streak to an end right there. <laughs> I thought that was Will. Any box of that? Welcome back to Las Vegas with just 127 players remaining in the 2016 main event 15 tables that need to play down to one champion. Right now, Mike Novinsky leads the way. At one of the few remaining outer tables, Melanie Wisner was dealt ace king. The 29-year-old LA pro has seen a raise from Michael Ruan and a three bet from Farhad Jamasi to her right with five trays suited. Wisner down to 20 big blinds. Jamasi, a 49-year-old Orlando, Florida amateur. Wisner shoves for just over a million. Jason McConnell in the big blind folds. Ruan folds. Jamasi makes the call. Well, a classic steal gone wrong, but he had to call because he's priced in. Melanie looks like she can't believe what just happened. Yeah, why me? She would double up to 45 big blinds if she can hang on. In Jamasi's defense, five tray does beat four hands. <laughs> There we go. We do you have two life cards? By the way, Ace King, only a three to two favorite here. Seems like it should be more. Yeah, it does indeed. Why is there not sitting comfortably here? I know. I have five. Her tournament life is at risk. Here is the flop. Melanie sees Jamasi flop an open ender. No, this isn't going to end well. King. Yeah, no more <laughs> <laughs> not Turn card another for Wisner still best. Okay. It just seems like Jamasi still has too many outs. Melanie All looking right, to survive this river. <laughs> You're right. I didn't even think about that. She's got a good idea what she needs to avoid. The river card is a five. Jamasi oh. pairs up and will knock out Wisner. Right. That doesn't seem right. There's going out of the main event, and there's going out of the main event with Ace King to five tray on day five when you started day five with a top ten stack. Ouch. Melanie with quite a bust out story to tell her folks back home. 127th place worth just over 49 grand. Her best ever World Series cash. It's of no consolation to Melanie, but she was the second to last woman standing. Now that title belongs to Gail Bowman once again. She finished 10th in 2012, coming ever so close to making the final table. And Gail Bowman becomes only the fourth ever to be last woman standing twice, joining Marsha Wagner, Annie Duke, and Maria Ho. Gail could use a quick double up. She's down to 12 big blinds, but Melanie Wisner will have to wait until next year for her next chance at the main event. It's a super fun run, and I put myself in an amazing position to to just get to like two and a half million. So I can't. I there's. I have no regrets of, of obviously of getting it in super good, and 
Um, I think I played really well throughout the whole tournament, and yeah, I'm. Uh, you know, there's like a, maybe a couple things I would have done differently, but overall, I'm I'm pretty pleased with how I played. And you know, as a poker player, that's really the best you can do. Weisner has played in every main event since 09. This will be her second cash in this event. Back to the featured table. Jason Les folds to Will Kasuf. How much you got back, roughly, total? Okay. None. That's Jason okay. Gooch in the small blind. Will's game, he says, is to convince them you've got nothing when you've got the nuts and convince them you've got the nuts when you've got nothing. He, he's Jamie Gold 2.0. 120. Raised to, raise to 120 with 10 9 off. Folded to the button. Rupon Powell with pocket nines. He says all in for 1.12 million. 31 year old London amateur. Are you sure? Yes. When's your flight back to London? Put for tomorrow. Well, I hope that's tomorrow. Yeah. Well, you might have rescheduled for tonight then, the way you're playing. <laughs> yeah, are you sure, Geezer? Mm, wow. <laughs> false. Do you want me to call then? You know you are, right? Hmm? Do you want me to call? Yes or no? Probably not, no. Probably not. Why would you ship it then? Keep the tournament life on the line. Just don't like ever showing down if I can avoid it. Wow. Um, even with aces. Definitely don't think you're that strong. This is a waste of time again. He's not calling. I think we're actually racing this time. Do I want to gamble with you? Do I want to gamble with you? You've had a good day though, right? You've enjoyed your time here? I haven't enjoyed it. Yeah, that's the main thing, right? See me if you bust, that's fine, yeah? As long as you had a good time, right? It's the taking part that counts, isn't it? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Sick, man. For <laughs> sake. Really? I'll give you maximum credit. If you show, I'll show. I can't show. Go on, I'll show the whole thing. If you table. show, I'll show. That's right, that's right. You, you must be I was, I was ahead. What do you have you to court on that? I had ace high. You had ace 10 high. high. I had a pair. I presume you could beat ace high. 10 beat high. high? OK. Like I said, I think we're flipping. But I'd rather shove with my hand than go with it. Depends how high your kicker is. I don't think you're flipping. But mm -hmm. I, we may have been. Ace 10 suited out there, Rufon. 10 9 <laughs> off. Ace 10 suited. Were we flipping? 10 9 be off. See you on TV. You had nines or eights? You See you on TV. I told you, we, we, we were flipping. See you on TV. And ace 10 suited. Wow. 10 9 off. What's it? Does it matter? Yeah. <laughs> what, did you have an ace? I don't think you had an ace. Rupam Powell gets the best of Kasuf in that hand. This is Rupam's sixth straight main event. Norman, he, he says he likes squash and soccer. Squash and soccer. No thanks and no thanks, but thanks for asking. <laughs> All right. We'll keep it here at the feature table. Why would you ever be embarrassed to show ace 10 suited? <laughs> because it was 10 9 off. I'll show that save. I want to see what you he's saying. No one's going to be showing that with credit it. anymore. No. That's it. Got to mix it up. That actually might be good for you. What? To, to open fold uh, a. No, to show. To show it? <laughs> well, if, if Tony shows one hand, I might show one. If Tony, sho option, if Tony shows one card hand. today, I might even show a few more hands. Tony's Put it that way. I've shown enough hands today. Pocket jacks. This is sick. Whose big blind is it? Oh. oh, there we go. Still 50, right? Hasn't changed. Same player? Yep, same player. Okay. I better be careful then, in case he ships it like a boss. Ah, oh, can't slow play it. 150. Race to 150. Can't slow play it. This time legit. Proper legit. Much better. Every 17th mm -hmm. Sunday, the liar isn't lying. Mm -hmm. This time I'll show. No bluff. And this time I want Tony to show. You show, I'll show. Oh, come on, Tony. All right, all right, I'll show. <laughs> He's so sick. Double suited? 8 6? Wow. You show now. I have, you show. I have to show now? Yeah. So, so, so. What's you my worst it? hand in Hold'em? My two, one of my two worst hands in Hold'em. Jacks. Oh, no. There you go. There you go. There you go. Ace King and Jacks. I hate Ace King and Jacks. Especially Ace King. Overrated. I'm warming up to him. He hates pocket Jacks too. There's probably a line about extinction here, but we'll play it straight. 04 main event champ Greg Raymer out of this main event. Put it in my uh, trophy closet. Ah, great, it's great. a nice souvenir. Thanks again for your speech. Yes. You're Cheers. Welcome. I'm not very good at this part, guys. I don't show any temper or emotion. It's poker. Bossman won it all in 04, was 25th in 05, and won 22nd this year. Not too shabby. Another potential elimination in progress. 24-year-old main event first-timer Adam Crack in the hoodie has pocket jacks, trying to knock out Alex Lindop, a bracelet winner holding ace-10. Yeah, Crack's a first-timer, so he doesn't know we don't like hoodies and we don't like pocket jacks. The flop. 
A deuce four, nothing in there for Lindop. He also doesn't know he's about to knock out a bracelet winner. Another four, let the exiting begin. And the Jacks have it. See, lindop has been around. He knows you always take your beverage with you. But the crack guy, he knows nothing. Lindop takes his lead, Crack takes his chips to boost the Massachusetts Poker Pro stack to almost four million. Another first timer, Valentin Vornicu, yeah, yeah. over six million. No, no, but like everybody, your friends are like, oh, you gotta, you gotta win it now. Yeah. I'm like, oh, you're in first place. Yeah, yeah you're, you're in first win place. Million. You gotta win it. He's one of many of our first timers still enjoying main event success here in 2016. Every time they tell me, I won the flip. All right, oh, I got a flip for 900. Fold into day six. <laughs> I don't know. I just we got we got to we got to play good and see what happens. We got one more level. At 950, you can coin a, you can toss a coin if you're gonna call or not. <laughs> you can follow me around. I'll I'll say things all the time. Just trying to have fun. I'm enjoying it. Two hundred dollars right now, straight up. It's my first time too. Uh, Five hundred. That is my first time or yours? Mine as well. I mean, I'm, I'm sure it is yours, but I'm saying I'm putting oh, money. What I'm Mitchell Watson from Australia. I'm a uh, elementary school teacher. First time playing the main. Thought I'd give it a crack. That, that beats me. That one card. Yeah, that one card. Okay, it is your first time. I learned how to play draw and stud poker when I was about five or six, and then um, just kept watching poker on TV, and then progressed to playing Hold'em. It's a competition for sure. I mean, it's it's war. It's very treacherous. People putting like million dollar stacks in. There's so much on the line right now. Easy to root for Vornicu and Watson, two school teachers going for the eight million. Watson's all in for 670 with pocket sevens. Blesnick said all in as well. And here come all the chips to isolate Watson. Action on Wojciech Ruzicka now. Watson stands up, he's at risk. Ruzicka folds, aces against sevens. Watson in trouble. What do you have? Huh? You're tens, right? Yes. God, how good do you play? Oh, I get nice. Let's feel it too. <laughs> Watson's first time about to end. He is packed up for early checkout. What did you have, nines or tens? Nine, nine, you had two nines? Nine, nine. Blazin's got to lose that Helmuthian tabling the cards that way business he does. All right, here is the flop. And Whoa! it's for Watson! Wow! <laughs> <laughs> Good quads giveth and quads taketh away. Mitch Watson. Aces against seven, the <laughs> flop court. You're With quad you're sevens. sevens. I got sevens. Oh, okay. I can't take it. And he'll <laughs> double up. I cannot take it. <laughs> Look at run time. There's no suspense. <laughs> I don't know what we're waiting for. I can't, I can't win. Why can't a school teacher run good, huh? Not even a sweat. Window doors. doors. <laughs> Sorry, man. You had your quads. <laughs> Belesnik takes the small hit. And Mitch Watson up to a million four, 28 big blinds. When Watson flopped quads, I'm surprised Blesnick didn't tear up the deck. Elsewhere, Cliff Josephy's tournament life is up for the taking. He shoved with a set of sixes. Vladimir Geshkin-Bain, though, flopped straight and flush draws. Geshkin-Bain 62nd at the 2013 main event. Turn card now, another spade. Geshkin-Bain with a flush. Josephy's got to connect with the river or he's done. Yeah, and now Josephy has to pair the board or his main event is over. The river card. Another four. Josephy pulls sixes full out of the river to survive. Josephy is not a first timer, different reaction. That cuts the stack of Geshten Bain to three and a half million. Josephy has a similar stack of 3.3. It's hard to win when you're wearing a Mets t-shirt. Cliff Josephy's main event flashed before his eyes, but a full house saved him. Like a boss. Do you want me to call? Yes or no? Probably not, no. Probably not. Why would you ship it then? Oh, seven Oh, wow. Yes. Oh, wow. Yes. Oh! Yes. Good <laughs> Day five full of drama here inside the Amazon room. Lon McCarron with Norman Chad and Kara Scott as we move closer to our final table of nine. If the nine best remaining players automatically made the final table, most would give Tony Gregg a seat. A talented pro with a keen sense of the game, and he's from Maryland, Norman. And he's good friends with Greg Merson, 2012 main event champ and longtime Laurel, Maryland resident. And speaking of Maryland, congratulations to Mark Bouchard, this year's winner of the Norman Chad Poker League, who cashed at this main event 373rd place.
You notice that Tony does yoga, and I'm going to go out on a limb, Norman, and guess you have never done yoga on purpose. That's not a limb you're out on. <laughs> Tony, Tony, Tony. Every time it's Tony. Tony raised. Tony this, Tony that. 110, Tony. Marvelous. Kasuf wakes up with aces. What a contrast in table presence between these two. Oh. Here is where Will's yeah. act could pay dividends. Been here before. You raised it. It was my button, right? I three bet. You jammed all in like a boss. Like an end boss who plays poker 37 times better than the rest of us. You made it 110 last time, right? Oh, I've got to be consistent. You make it 110. I've got to make it 260. Same bet. He's got to find out where I am. Seven million behind. And give Will credit for being consistent with the table talk, whether he has pocket aces or pocket squad douche. Now show me a fold. Well, the best hand at the moment. Now show me a fold. But you played to win, right? You won the one, right? You play for it all. You're not going to play to ladder, so... We can gamble here and get it all in. You know me, I like to gamble with the nuts. No, no, no ship this time. You shipped it last time. Wow. The Wilka Soup wind-up doll coming to stores in time for Christmas. What, you call and then you look? <laughs> wow. That's how you won the one drop, fair play to you. Here's the flop. A pair of kings. Caution, Tony. He checks. Kasu stops talking to allow himself to actually think. Huh, different tack. 425. 425,000 with pocket aces. Top pair for Greg. No bluffing. This time, if you phone show, I'll show. I've got a very big hand. No bluffing. Kasu strikes me as a cross between Daniel Negreanu, Jean Robert Ballon, and a car horn that's stuck. <laughs> It means that much too, I will show you. I'm not bluffing her. Got a made hand. Pre flop, on the flop. If we even see this in a river. I'll get my chips in good. I'm not making a move. What is one to think? Greg says yoga and meditation have been invaluable, but they may be no match for Kasuf. Not making a move on you, son. Got a big hand. That's a call. Wow. Calls. Calls. One point five almost in the middle. Turn card. Jack of clubs, both with Broadway draws. Tony actually open-ended. A big hand for Greg. Top pair with up and down straight draw. And Kasuf again, momentarily, puts down his speech play and puts on his thinking cap. He checks back. River card. A third club hits the board. Tony Gregg certainly might think he has the best hand here, particularly considering Kasuf's rangy play. Tony Gregg has top pair. Reaching for chips. 190, a tiny bet. 190? Yeah, very small wager. We call that a blocker bet. It prevents your opponent from forcing you to call a bigger bet. What's with the little blocker bet? I thought you were either going to check or you're going to ship it. I'll bet like 500, okay? Will and I are on the same page. We've, we've got a thing. Careful there. <laughs> <laughs> There's three hands that I'm concerned about. Two I'm beating, one I'm not. That makes you a two to one favorite. Easy call for 190. Two I'm beating, one I'm not. That makes you a two to one favorite. Easy call for 190. I'm hoping you got ace, king, or queens. Those two I can beat. Set of tens, I can't. King, queen. No, oh. oh, well. Shows kings with a queen. Aces. Tony Gregg's stack falls below a million. You didn't want all my chips, I guess. Tony Gregg's right. Kasuf might have stacked him there. Gambling with the nuts. What is it? What was that, Jason? It wasn't just the nuts. It was the. What was it pre-flop? The nuts. No, it wasn't the nuts. Better than the nuts. What's it called? The coconuts. The coconuts. That's the Jason's with it. It's the coconuts. Oh, He's learning. The coconuts. 
A scary board may have saved Tony Gregg's main event. It's going to be a steep climb back to the comfort zone for him. Back into the field, two all in on the right with ace 10. Fadi Hamad standing with pocket queen Sebastian Dornbrock. On the left, Kenny Hollard has kings. I think if he wins, I take second place in this match. I take just the queen. Hollard looking for the double knockout. Here is the flop, two at risk. And Ace and Hamad takes the lead, looking for a triple up. Dornbrot, 28-year-old German pro, doesn't like the look of it. Turn card now is a heart. Hallart does have the better of the two flush draws. Hallart now can still get the double knockout with a River King or Hart. And the River card is a hard. Hollard stuns the other two with a flush and gets the double knockout. Dornbrock done in 104th, Hamad 105th. Both went over 49 grand. And the Belgian poker tournament director, Kenny Hollard, scoops the massive pot, swelling his chip stack to eight and a half million. I'm very glad I stayed. <laughs> One tournament director helping another. An eight million chip swing on that river card. Kenny Hollard has a fighting chance at eight million bucks in November. Welcome back to Las Vegas. Day five of the main event winding down. 103 players left. Trivia question, Lon. Can you name the last three main event runners up? I can't remember your name half the time. That's what I thought. Josh Beckley, <laughs> Felix Stevenson, Jay Farber. There it is, big blind special. Did you already look? Wow, I've already looked, yeah, I always look. I have to gamble with the nuts, that's fine. There we go, no shame in folding. Okay. You fold and show, I'll show. Look, how's that? How's that, Jason? Down to the blinds. You fold and show, I'll show. Big end. Jason, Jason. I said, if you fold and show, I will show. Because I got a big hand here. 150. As usual. Best hand. Second best hand. Remember last time you limped out a crap hand? I checked behind, remember? This time I got a much better hand. Oh, you had the spare 100 there. Yeah, it makes sense. <laughs> the amateur Oliveira has never seen anyone quite like Will Kasuf. Here's the flop. Deuce four, queen, bottom pair for less, top pair for Kasuf. Uh, try looking bored, isn't it? Unless you've got spades. Let me have a look. I don't want to make a mistake. No, I've still got it. Still there. I wonder if there's any other part of Kasuf's life where he does this, you know, like at the supermarket. Does he ever try to bluff a cashier? 235. With four times the stack as less. Less having bad memories of earlier hands against Kasuf. I'm making a move. You show me your best card, I'll show you my best card. When you're when they're facing the bat, you're not allowed to talk. I haven't said anything about that. When, when, you, when you bet and he's thinking, you're not allowed oh, to talk. So if I hadn't bet, I'm allowed to talk then? If he's not facing the bet, sure, talk away. Oh, okay, fair enough. But when you bet and they're facing the bet, you're not allowed to talk. I can't say anything? Nope. Oh, wow. I didn't know that's the rule. I didn't know that was a rule. Will has already served one penalty at this main event. So I can give him a five-minute speech <laughs> and then, uh, then think about it. Actually, I don't like Will's talk when the other person must act. You've got to give them some room. Ace is up for less now and a commanding advantage. That was lucky, wasn't it? Let me get there. I think I was winning anyway. Less checks the best hand. Check to induce. Oh, you want me to bet or you want me to check? I have to ask you now, because once I make the bet, I'm not allowed to say anything, apparently. So I thought I'd ask the question. <laughs> If you don't say anything, I'm after better. I think I'm winning now. Jason Les just wants the ringing in his ears to stop. Okay, just in case, gone. Oh, he checks back. River card. Oh, and Les fills up. Deuce is full for him. And now is the time for Jason Les to bet the best hand. Check to induce. Well, I'll improve on the river. It's not a bad card. It's not a good card, it's not a bad card. You do step three, gonna help you. I don't think you're cool with it, is. I think if you had a queen, you just got saved by the river, right? I 
I'm hoping you got four or five suited. I'll be happy to see four or five of clubs. Les may have left some Good. chips on the table. Wow. Oh, nice, uh, nice catch, nice catch, obviously. Kasuf actually played that hand pretty well, put in zero chips on the turn on the river. Jason Les has to be steaming a bit. Any rufflers of that? Ping, instant, ace. What's that? Deuce on the river, honk. Uh, it doesn't it? I had three pairs. Do I get free drink? Is it free drink for the waitress? I had three pairs. Quickly, tell the TD, wait. Three. <laughs> See that sickness? I'm pretty on the river as well. I think with Chopping Ivy, he's got a weaker queen. Instant service for Jason. Ping. Well, there's 27 aces in the deck, isn't it? There's one. So many outs. Oh, the deuce on the river for insurance. Just for the rub then. Well, no, Jason's still rub uh, running bad, guys. He's running bad. If Jason's assembling a video resume of poker hands, that one's not going to make the reel. Born and still lives in California, travels to Vancouver to play online poker. He's one of the best heads-up players in the game. I'm also one of the best heads-up players in the world. The problem is I don't ever get heads up, so I don't get to show the world what I'm capable of. It's a sad story, really. You need to have a minimum of two bracelets for him to consider a swap. Well, how does World Series of Poker circuit rings translate to bracelets? There's got to be conversion rate, in, right? In his mind, it's zero, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even like if, four to one or something? No, nothing. But if I melt them all, <laughs> I can probably mince them back into a bracelet. I'm just, <laughs> I think that would be the, I, that'd be a fair equivalent. Eight rings, a bracelet, eight yeah. to one. Valentin Vornicu has joined the table. Eight times circuit ring winner. Vorniko says, Phil Halmuth hates us circuit guys. Why? He says, because we keep busting him. Gordon Veo, 27-year-old pro from San Francisco. Open raise to 110 with ace four. And Vorniko shades on and king eight in play. And he's going to come along. Big blind Jesse Cohen, a very good friend of Veo, but does not want to challenge him. You mentioned Veo, 27 years old, and he has 27 World Series caches. And he's a good friend with your dapper buddy, Neil Blumenfield. Here's the flop. Seven, nine, ace, no spades. Top pair for Veo. Vornik, who missed. He checks. With a weak ace, Veo checks back. Jack of spades. Vornik, who picks up a gut shot. Vornik, who doesn't have much, but he figures a bet might end matters. Three times the stack is Veo. He bets 125. Valentin is a math teacher. Gordon didn't finish high school. This is a match made in heaven. When they are both out of hands, Valentin is helping Gordon get the credits he needs to graduate. <laughs> Veo with the best hand. Just a call, 125. You're never sure with the weak ace. But Valentin is sure he didn't want to see a call there. River card. Tray of hearts is the third heart on the board. Valentin quickly reaches for chips. That's 225. Vornicu acting as if he's got something. Vornicu just called the raise pre-flop. There's a call from Veo, and he will take it. The math teacher doesn't have as many chips to count now. Well, when you run well, you start to think you'll run well forever. That's not the case. I found that out in my late 20s. Veo with two and a half million now, 50 big blinds. <laughs> I'll take, yeah, yeah, I'll take it. Yeah, he's used no, to I shipping it to me. He's, he's used, used to shipping it. Over Send it over here. Like, Valentin Vornicu with some non-standard moves in that hand. Antonio S. Vandiari and Phil Locke explain why. Vornicu decides to defend with king eight of spades in the small blind, and we start seeing things kind of wobble sideways from there. Right, one bad decision can lead to many other bad decisions down the line. Personally, I'm not a fan of calling king eight of spades in the small blind. I either like to take the lead and put in a three bet or just kind of give it up. I don't like playing king eight kicker out of position, and I don't really want to flop a flush draw with it and draw out of position. So I don't really like to call pre-flop. This hand also demonstrates how you can actually get the chips without being aggressive. Bayo decides, hey, well, I raised kind of a shaky-ish hand, ace four offsuit, and as things progress, he realizes, well, I don't have a durable hand, but I can sure pick off bluffs. He keeps the pot small and he only calls. He never even bets, and he gets the most. Right, well, he induced a bluff that worked out. He won the money. 
How come the guys who never make day five of the main event tell the guys who do make day five of the main event how to play? Phil Locke and Antonio Esfandiori, please. All right, let's get back into the shrinking field of tables. The last woman left, Gail Bowman, just moved her final 195,000 chips into the pot. She has pocket deuces. Action is on Maxim Sorokin. He has 10 trays suited in the big blind. He also has 6 million chips. Why not call? Very casual, man. Kings? Eight. Yeah, sure. Kings. And thus starts the greatest comeback in World Series history. I think everyone is pulling for you right there. <laughs> Not me. Gail yeah, Bowman down to just under four big blinds. Sorokin, a Russian poker pro, enjoying his first main event cash. All right, here is the flop. Sorokin hits his 10. He takes the lead. And Bowman staring squarely at the possibility of no big blinds at the end of this hand. Turn card now is a six. One more shot for Gail Bowman. Her partner Kevin on the sidelines. Relax, Max. Calm down. Calm down. Gail Bowman's got to have a deuce. She got it! Every blue moon, a deuce on the river changes something. I don't think it changed Maxim's stack, though. <laughs> Gail Bowman with nine big blinds now. And everyone seems very happy to still have her in the game. The last woman remaining in the tournament still has her seat. A two-outer keeps Gail Bowman in the main event just barely. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. 102 players remain. Our first timers continue to shine at this year's main event. I can tell that the room's getting smaller. I realize that the money's getting bigger and bigger as the room shrinks, but at the same time, when I'm at that table and making the decisions, the money's not on my mind. I'm just focused on making the best decisions that I can and just looking forward to the payout of hopefully those good decisions paying off. But like the fact that I even get any opportunity to be on camera like this and to have a big stack in the main event, I, I say this to everyone, I'll keep saying it again, it's surreal. It's honestly unbelievable. The one-time tournament chip leader, Novinsky, yeah. still sporting a strong stack of 6.6 .6 million. The turn gave him an Andre Konopelko top pair. Andre with a better kicker. Four spades on the board, though, could be dangerous, but neither holds a spade. Konopelko, 52-year-old businessman from Belarus, made two final tables at World Series Europe in 2013. 80,000 is the bet. Novinsky plays Hearthstone and Pokemon Go in his free time. Son, life is too short to play those games in your free time. <laughs> a call from Novinsky. River card now. Jack of spades. Look at that board. A flush for each. Both would, of course, play the board at showdown. Very unlucky for Konopelko. Looks like it will be a chopped pot. Konopelko. I don't know what is going on with Konopelko's head, and honestly, I don't want to know. He's putting a bet together with five spades on board just to test Novinsky, it looks like. 135,000. Well, I'm no expert, but something about the way Konopelko assembled that bet screams weakness to me, not to mention the strap on his head. <laughs> These are two very even chip stacks. Novinsky with a slight advantage. And Mike with some lavender chips. And there is a raise to 455. And Konopelko now in a tough spot. Uh, he can check again, but he has no spade. If Novinsky has any spade in his hand other than the deuce, Novinsky has a winner. The odd thing is Novinsky, I believe, was raising because he thinks kings and jacks are good here. Konopelko is going to give it up, and what a raise by Novinsky to steal the entire pot. Wow. Back when I was a first-timer, I didn't have moves like that. Oh, and now you have moves like that. Well, no. <laughs> the Canadian over 7 million, the Belarusian under 6.2, wondering if he was had. Well, how can we not root for this guy? Place is only going to get louder and louder as this goes on, I think. 
Jankovic. Gail Bowman's all in again. Her ace jack dominated by the ace king of Alex Keating, who is by her side. <laughs> chop, 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 okay. The flop, no help to Bowman. When did they get together? I, I'm just too laser focused on the blinds. I miss all the human interest stuff going on. <laughs> Turn card, five of diamonds brings Gale to her last resort. Bowman just stuck around with a two outer. Now she needs a three outer. She's got to have a jack. It's a king and that secures the win for Alex Gale Bowman done with this main event. Her partner Kevin will need to put on his consoling hat now. Well, she's still with him? Oh, good. She's still with him. Gail Bowman, quite impressive. 10th in 2012, 102nd in 2016. Keating from Austin, Texas will stack 46 big blinds after his elimination of the last woman in this year's main event. Where? She did it again. Yeah, I was hoping to do better than four years ago. Unfortunately, it won't be this year, but I keep trying. <laughs> Quite a feat for the French pro. Nice job, Gail. Back in Las Vegas, the Amazon room thinning out quickly. 100 players remain in the main event, just 12 tables in action. And a strong showing this year from the UK at the main event of the 100 players left. 11 Brits still in the hunt for the $8 million first prize, including the man with the million dollar mouth, Will Kasouf. Kasouf currently sitting with over 8.1 million chips. One eyewitness to Will Kasouf's antics is 57-year-old Mitch Garshovsky. Early on day five, he played a key role in Stacey Madison's main event event. Hey, Floor, how about a clock? We all have to play 10. Absolutely. You have 50 seconds to act on your hand. Do you have an action? Of course, yeah. We'll yeah. A 10 second countdown. If you count a zero, you're good. It's a long time for you. You know, it's a big decision. All right, all right just let it go. I will never do that when your tournament life is on hand. I will never do that. Were you close? Did that rush you? Did you want 10 more minutes? Yeah, I, I wanted more time. I did want more time to think about it. I'm a local, usually known as a good character who oh, is I'm... very fair. So, how much? it wasn't malicious. I think everyone agreed. Garshowski maybe a bit quick calling the clock. Stacy folded, then promptly got knocked out when her pocket aces were cracked. Garshowski gets a pass from me because he graduated from the University of Maryland, though he says his college degree is basically worthless, and who knows, maybe he's right. <laughs> Kasuf and Garshowski see a flop. Bottom pair for Garshowski. Kasuf missed, and now he's a three-to-one dog. It's been checked over to Will. He checks back. Garshowski opting to check twice on the flop. He might have a point about that college degree. <laughs> Turn card, another nine. Garshowski checks again. I wish Garshowski would bet the best hand. Do you remember what the maximum score was? Three dots from earlier? Do you remember? You were calling it a buck 80. Yeah, how do they say it in the dots? You don't say it in England? 180. Ah, it gets better every time. I think Mitch prefers 180. I think that hand's right in your range. He is right in my range. No, I'm, I'm protecting the hand. I'm betting better. You tell me what you had, I'll even show it. What did you have? Seven, six suited. You did. You folded two pair? No, well, one pair was on the board. Having yeah. the bottom pair okay. isn't a great hand. Okay. You said it. You, now you okay. lied. I don't think you had seven, six suited. You'd have folded uh, if you had two pair. Uh, this isn't cool. This is. <laughs> <laughs> don't, oh, don't get involved, man. Jason. No calls, no comments, Jason. Uh, Please. I told you That's honestly, a, too. You honestly you had seven, six? I had six, seven of hearts. Well, okay, I was. I was Okay, I thought I was a value better for the best hand. You, you want me to tell you what I had? Well, you said you would. I had okay. ace-king. Ace of spades, king of hearts. I'm honest, I'll be honest. Yeah. I didn't think you'd fold two pair. It wasn't two I can't pair. give you a free card. Once it comes a bad board, I've got to think ace-king. It wasn't two pair. Sorry? That's like saying there's a straight flush on board and you had a straight flush. You had two pair though, right? I had a... I matched the bottom pair on the board. Yeah. Well, you're winning. Okay. I had to, I had to take my hand. I'll find out so where I'm I was. I'm not afraid to fold the best hand now and again. Yeah. I'm still I had ace -king. I'll be honest, I had okay. ace -king. But well, I didn't want to give you a free card. I thought if you got ace high. He outplayed me. Congratulations. Not really outplayed. Uh, good luck. Oh, I was surprised you folded too bad. That was fine. It wasn't a needle. Don't take it away. No. Okay. I didn't mean it like that. With Kasuf, it always sounds like a needle, even if he's given grace before a meal. 
Will under the gun with pocket nines. 130. Raise to 130. You heard him. Oh, snap shove. Rupump moves all in with ace queen of clubs. Any takers? Why? I mean, I'm not obviously paying him move. Why? You don't want to come back in October? In. <laughs> <laughs> I'm asking why. He's my friend. Been here long well, what else, been what else am I going to do? No, I'm right? not pulling a move. Wait, out? No, I'll get in the game. Hey, if I exchange needles with Sean Deep, this, this guy's easy. <laughs> I'll buy you a beer for win. I just mean there's talking. Have to go, man. Um, yep. Ace Rupon Queen needs help or his main yeah. event's done. Suit it. Boy, he gets hands, huh? Come on, man. Powell with an Luck economics man. degree from the London School of Economics. Duh. You wouldn't want an anthropology degree from the London School of Economics. We don't need to run it. Just give him a 3. 345. And now the flop. There's an ace in the window. Now Kasuf needs to pull off a long shot. Yeah, this was a race. It is now a one horse race. Run twice? You got Watch, watch this now. There's seven of spades. You do a run in twice. So There's seven of spades on the turn. You Just double. for the sweat, come on. No, I, don't, yeah, I don't need Come it, on, you're messy. I don't need to sweat for this. <laughs> if you don't have a sweat, the nine's coming on the turn. <laughs> you, seven you lost out. when he said Seven of spades on the turn. You lost eight when he said Arsenal. Eight of gives him another out. Kasuf incorrectly calls a card for the 23rd time. You double your outs, but... You can't ask for more than that. <laughs> River card. Jack and Powell wins it. Nice hand, Fish. <laughs> nice one, mate. Is that right? Three yeah. foot. I told you to give him one. I put it out there before. I just felt you winning that end. For now, RuPaul Powell with chips at this featured table. That just means more Will Kasuf for him. You have to like, we have to like, have to like, have this like, take an hour. Since 1970, Las Vegas has hosted the World Series of Poker. It's changed a lot since the first one, but the prestige remains the same. Nothing quite like becoming the main event champion. We just witnessed two Londoners squaring off. Now it's two Canadians. Vancouver's Mike Davinsky flopped a wheel draw against Toronto's Griffin Benger, the tournament chip leader. He leads with pocket eights and check the seven deuce five board. Davinsky, a former chip leader here, makes the bet of 155. Levinsky, 25 years old. Benger, 31 years old. Levinsky, the pre-flop raiser. Benger will come along with the best hand. Turn card now, queen of diamonds. Benger still good, checks again. Toronto versus Vancouver. Boy, those are two wonderful cities. A couple of pretty good gamers here squaring off in the main event. Levinsky. This time, 240,000, a little more than one-third the pot. Vinsky bluffs at it again. Benger, the number one ranked online player in the world in 2012. A lot of people play online, and the world is pretty big, so that's impressive. Of course, most people in the U.S. absurdly cannot play online, so it makes the online world a little smaller. Benger, also a part-time poker TV commentator, makes the call. Rivercard, six of clubs. Novinsky misses. Benger's eights are best. But the realization of that could be obscured by the straighty, flushy board. He checks a third time. Back when I used to work as a, a sailor, we had an expression. Don't give up the ship. Same thing applies here for Michael Novinsky. He's got to stick with his hand through thick and thin. Don't give up the ship, Michael. The only thing I heard was back when I was a sailor. I'm sorry. <laughs> We have seen that Novinsky is capable of testing his opponents late in the hand. And he is looking down at his chip stack. The Lavender's worth 100 grand each. Novinsky with 440,000. Well, Benger check called the flop, then check called the turn. Does he have one more check call in him? The flush did get there. Otherwise, pocket eights look pretty good. He doesn't look comfortable, and Benger folds the best hand. Novinsky rolls on in the main event. Very nice. First-timer bluffs a top pro. Poker is a wonderful game. 127 big blinds for Michael Novinsky. Chip leaning up against the wall. I don't know if it's yours or his. It's yours, because he's not here. This is America. <laughs> there was a chip right there, and we don't know whose it is. And I just played a pot. So what do we do? We flip for it? Do you want to flip for it? Uh, rock, paper, scissors, shoot? I'll shoot. Okay. I love the main event. 
When you're running bad, you're running bad. Get bluffed, then throw papers to scissors. Win will be agony end for Griffin. The media worked tirelessly on this event. Well, except you, Norman. Uh, okay, Mr. Pedicure. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. It is an Nin 99, bubble. it goes up. At 99, it goes up. So if you all keep folding, you've uh, laddered up. Well played. Guess what? We're back at the feature table, sure, if you didn't know. Every, everybody's yeah, thanks, laddering up thanks. right now. That's what they're... I'm hoping one double up, I should be all right. <laughs> Will Kasuf does not appear to have an you know, off button. Arsenal fan. Like, that doesn't change. Yeah, so is he. Jason he's Les will fold care. to Kasuf yeah, in the cutoff. I know, he's already given me a blow today. Yeah. And even 100 players left in the 2016 main event. Is he going to look at his hand, or does that interrupt the pattern? If I knew who he was, I was not going <laughs> to of spades. A suited one gapper, the Negranu. Actually, Daniel's favorite hand is 10-7, the suited two gapper. It has been folded 150. to him, 150,000. Veo folds now to Pal on the button. He's sitting on 11 big blinds. One in. They're in the middle now. <laughs> is this the Arsenal battle? You don't like money or what? You <laughs> laddered? Uh, no, no. You haven't even laddered, laddered yet. Can you talk while I'm still to act? Can you? Know. you haven't even laddered. What are you doing? Got man. to, man. Got hand plays itself. Small blind folds. Big pay jump at 99. He ships it when there's 100 left. Look Indeed, there's an $8,300 pay jump for lasting through one more bust out. Out in the field, John Turner just called all in. His opponent, Adam Crack, has him at risk. And Crack flops Broadway. Give us. Turner needs help. Doesn't get it. He is eliminated in 100th place. Everyone just got a raise. Oh, man, I just lost my last redhead dream you team. It. You got it. Oh, sweet. oh my, what a liberty. He you doesn't deserve that. If I bust him now, he should have 100th, right? Because he went all in first. No. No, no. no that guy gets I'm it. I'm buying your beer. How blessed are you? Hey, it's he slower. ladders. It's slower. And if even I call, I dump him off again. That's, even, there's no justice even, in this game. Even, even if you call, it's going to go take a while to the, uh, set up the flop. He's just laddered, but he went all in before the other. No justice, isn't it? It's so sick. Gee, where was the delay on this table? I don't want, know what to I need to ask the audience. <laughs> call or fold? What do you think? Call or fold? <laughs> Ask the audience. <laughs> I can't find a friend. I'm not allowed to use the phone. <laughs> this is a coin flip. This is what we call a coin flip. It's Don't tails. do this at home, kids. I didn't say what tails meant. Ah. <laughs> this is come, on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Let's, game. let's go, let's go. Let's do this. It, it, this is literally a coin flip. The, then Our two hands. Then Our flip two hands. the coins and let's go. Come yeah, on. you just flipped it. <laughs> I didn't say what we got. Okay, say what? Hang on, what's, what's about 600? Before I clock. 695. This isn't that hard of a call or that hard of a fold. Will's got plenty of chips. Time. You've had a good time. Uh, that's fine. No, that's fine. Go on. I'll let you have it. Yeah, right. you, you can't flip that 7 3 over. He's got it. <laughs> he can't flip it over. You know how There's when you eat well. cotton candy, those first few bites are pure bliss? Then you get near the end of it and feel sort of sick? Ladies and gentlemen, Will Kasuf, the living, breathing blue cotton candy. 99. Any ice creams about? Remember Cliff Josephy, who rivered a needed full house to survive? Well, he's got pocket kings trying to knock out Lenny DeSico right next to him, holding ace king. The 50-year-old online legend in good shape here to knock out the 50-year-old IT architect. DeSico from Asheville, North Carolina. No threat to the pocket kings held by Josephy, who stands to lose most of his chips if the kings fail him. Turn card. Eight of spades. DeSico has one last shot. <laughs> Yeah, I got to use it one time. To seek him, looking for an ace. It's a oh. king, Josephy, with a bit of overkill, okay. rivering the set. Lenny DeSico done with his main event. Out in 99th place, a nice payout. Not long ago, Josephy was one card from elimination. Now he's got almost six million chips. Wow, what a run by Josephy on this day five. Back to the Will Kasuf show at center stage. Jason Les folds to Kasuf, who's got a real hand, Queens. 150 is the raise and no announcement. Yeah, one raise, no speech. Pals all in with Jax. <laughs> Are you all right? You got a flight to catch? I do have a flight to catch tomorrow, but I might change it. I might change it. Man. Wow, he likes really? you. He likes you. No need to push it back with pocket jacks. By the way, I'm giving you a minute this time. I'm not... Have you laddered? You laddered? Yep. Oh, you've laddered. Okay, I'll call. 
Oh. Oh, boy, Jack. <laughs> Pal is at oh, risk, like and he's way behind. For God's sake, man. Oh. How many times are going to run yeah, Jack lucky with Ace Queens, screen. man? You got lucky with Ace Queen against Wall. Oh, God's sake, oh. man. Oh. Hey. He waited. Queens versus Jack. Obviously, oh, Queens. How, how bad do I run? How bad do you run? Leave oh, me out. What do you mean? How bad? <laughs> Like, what do you want me to do? Like, like, I get in good against you twice. Nines, no. I lost your race. You know what? I just, getting saw, in good. I That's just a saw Jack swap quad jacks earlier on my tables. Right, let me get. I'm standing up for this bad beat. Let me watch it with you guys. All so London, you all in Jackson, again. Queens. Law Queens. guy versus finance guy. Queens. You can afford to lose a million. Come on, Will. Yeah, you help, can. Help, help, help a Brit out. Fight in the cheap seats. <laughs> brick, 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 followed by brick, brick. Thank you, ship. Easy game. Jack high. Jack of diamonds. First card. Put an 8 9 10 there. 8 9 10. No jack. Al may not need to change that flight. It comes 6 on the turn. 6 on the turn. Jack of diamonds on 10. You'll be alright, son. Straight to Jack of diamonds. You'll be alright. Jack of diamonds. 9. Let's go. Brick. Another 8 is not a jack. Oh, big sweat now. Big sweat. Pal's got to have a jack. And it's a 9 on the river. It's an eight on the river. Top. Kasu yeah, finds top. Queens top. just in time oh, to knock out yeah. Rupon Powell. 98th place worth over 57 oh, grand nice. US, oh, luckily for the Brit. Cheers. 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 Good luck to the 99, man. That was, yeah. that was a big payout. Cheers, dude. Good luck, guys. Well yeah, played, everyone. Nice playing with all of you. You got the pay jump. Yeah, you got the pay jump, exactly. Yeah, it was a decent pay jump as well, I think. Like Mr. Coconuts, Will Kasup takes the main event lead. The most talkative, the most controversial, now with the most chips. Bender in second, Novinsky in third. I'd like to thank all my redheads, Adam Friedman, Jen Shahadi, Melanie Weiser, and John Turner for their fabulous runs. At the 2016 World Series of Poker main event, ignorance can be bliss. If you missed it, you're going to have to just watch it on TV. <laughs> How else to explain the confident, deep runs of first-timers Valentin Bornicu? Playing the main for the first time. Mike Davinsky. It's looking very, very good. And Mitch Watson. Oh, yes. Aces against sevens, I flop courts. How else to explain the smile that envelops Will Kasus' exterior? Showtime? Coconut. Nuts, monkey nuts, coconuts. Like a boss. How else to explain playing for millions of dollars without feeling an ounce of pressure? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. Whoa. As day five concludes, staying ignorant might just be the best advice the remaining players can get. That's it. continues to dwindle. The stakes continue to rise. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the Rio All Suite Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada, for the conclusion of day five of the World Series of Poker main event. But this is the main event. Nerve right here. The whole thing is nerve right <laughs> here. You're winning, baby boy. I'll tell you right now. He's cuter than heck. The only thing you want to be good looking in this event is your stack, and Valentin Bornicu is doing quite nicely. He looks like a cuter than heck math Olympian with a dream. That man woke soup, the best looking stack in the room. He looks like a cuter than heck former lawyer turned relentless table talker with a dream. Alex Keating's beard's made a name for itself, and now his play is raising eyebrows too. He looks like a cuter than heck unshaven attention grabber with a dream. Now, Norman, your favorite part of the show, the leaderboard. Kasuf on top, first timer Mike Novinsky in second. Look, are you gonna hold that leaderboard thing against me for the rest of my life? Yes, with under 100 players, it starts to matter. Are you happy now? So the last break of the day is pretty much finished now. You're heading into the last level. Talk to us about how comfortable you've been at this table. Oh, uh, it's been pretty good. It's not been a bad table. I think I heard a uh, big stack come in just now. I think Valentin has just uh, joined the table, so he's going to mix it up a bit, I'm sure. So it's going to be a lot more uh, trickier for me now than I uh, had the uh, plane sailing earlier on. But I had a really tough grind the first three days. I was like under half average for days one to three. Went down to nine big blinds before the money. Uh, got it in with ace-king and clubs versus queens. Hit the ace, doubled up, and just went from there. And I uh, had a really good day yesterday. Uh, crushed my table then, just literally gambled with the nuts, gave them the speech, they didn't want to believe me. And they, they called, called off the whole step pretty light. And uh, yeah, got easy chips then. It's not been uh, an easy day today. I, I mean, I've had the hands. Uh, I've been paid off when I've had it. I've got my bluff, bluff through. Um, so I'm speeching them well. Getting to the call uh, when I want it. Well, good luck out there. I'm going to let you get back to the table. You're about yeah. to start. Thanks okay, so much. no worries. Thank you.
Feelings seem to be mixed about Will Kasuf, but if you take away his speech play, he is a big stack with a seemingly good grasp on the game. Norman, who do you think is out there in the field that can join Will on the leaderboard by making a run later on day five and position themselves for a good day six? Lon, poker is about position. We've heard that for years from geniuses like Antonio Esfandiari. Early position, middle position, late position. All analytical poker roads lead to position. To the left, to the right, to the moon! But it's just pretty simple. You want to act right after the big stacks. That is called well-positioned, like Warren Buffett's holdings in MasterCard. Hey, I'm well-positioned every show. Big stack Lon McCarran babbles, and I chime in right after. I've had position on him for years, and he's never thought to switch it up. He's a little thick. Anyway, at our feature table, Gordon Veo has position on chip leader Will Kasuf. My money, if I had any, would be on Gordon having a big day. You figured that the cards are extra big? Veo in the cutoff position in this hand. Action on Kasu first. He loves to open, and he does. 155 with 7-5 off. Veo with pocket eights. Boy, Veo just turned real serious. Like someone told him he had to solve the global warming crisis <laughs> in the next 15 minutes, or we will all perish. He is from San Francisco, and they all think like that anyway. 27-year-old <laughs> pro. Veo just calls. I gotta put my shades for this one. Okay. First time we're born. Can't, can't stand you guys looking at me like that. Uh oh. Feels like you know what I have. Don't understand these youngsters. I offered a good luck starburst to Valentine on the break. He checked the side of the package to see if there's gelatin in there. There was, so he passed because he's a vegan. Apparently, he's running so good he can keep building a stack without the benefit of a good luck starburst. <laughs> he's hoping to get lucky. He As he calls with the six four suited, maybe the one and one hundred eighteen flush comes through on the flop. Three to the flop, here it is, all paint. Nobody has a card bigger than eight, so <laughs> nobody likes that. Kasuf checks. Yeah, that flop and those hands have no relationship. But somebody's got to do something. Veo checks. Vorniku follows suit. Oh, I haven't slept in. Turn card is a 10. Everyone's open-ended playing Almost the board. Check. Another check. You bet you win. Check. Wow, right? Come on, Valentine. it's been checked to you twice. You bet you win. No winners yet. Set in the trap. River card. Oh. Pairs the board. Jackson 8's are best for Bayo. By the way, we just saw Kara Scott interview Kasuf. She asked him one question. He gave a 40-second <laughs> answer without coming up for air. Now he doesn't say a word and won't make a move out of position. <laughs> he checks. Okay, Gordon, you have the best hand. It's been checked 43 times. Uh, Better than take it. Oh, nope. Now the man with position. Yeah, he better bet here or I will lose my lunch, and my lunch was three starbursts. <laughs> that is 175. Well, this piker's not going to call, but if he had any gumption, he'd check-raise these losers into Hoover Dam. <laughs> Kasuf gives it up. Veil with two pair. He folds. Show the flop out i got to show it. Yeah, beautiful. Beautiful. Now we got a game. Uh, well, you picked up a flush draw on the river. I know, right? <laughs> Yeah, it's strong. You got to give him props. If I have the ace, I do play the same way, though. Yeah. Nice time, nice time. I don't expect anybody's going to call. Gordon Veo could have called. Loser. If that makes TV. I'm going to frame it and put it on YouTube. Oh, it's easy, yeah. We're like, right. check, 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 check. You have to bet, River. You have to. In, if I was in your position, I'd 100% bet. I know. If it's going to check, easy, check all the, the way. It's easy. Is, is the, power of position. They might give a free lesson on that. The power of position. Look how Valentin played this hand superbly in position. Like a balls. Check, 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 check. Bet, fall, fall. Six high. Sorry. One, 60, right? The soup with a big stack uh, at this table. 8.6 million. A suited ace. That might be the worst played hand I have ever seen. <laughs> and I, I began playing poker in the late 1940s on an oil rig near a petting zoo. <laughs> a raise to 140. Well, Kasuf is action in early or late position with his chips and with his chatter. This is my bluff of the night. Okay. Vornica with the second biggest stack here. Queen, Jack. What is it now? 140? Valentine likes to see flops. On three of his eight circuit rings at the bike in L.A., just up the road a bit from his San Diego home, he makes the call. Tony Gregg. Queen 10 gives it up. Big blind. Gorky Oliveira pocket deuces for the amateur from Brazil, and he's going to come along. Three-way action. Oliveira against two very talented poker players. Flop, 10 tray, 4. Middle pair is best for Kasuf. Oliveira checks his deuces. 
Flopping that middle pair, Kasuf can continuation bet with conviction here. 290. With the best hand, 290,000 is the bet. Let me do the math for Valentin. You got 0% of that flop. Really, 290? No bluffing. Get my chips in good, that's all I can do. He's behind too, I can't. Yeah. I think I got you, but I don't know no, if I got we him. Can't, we can't talk about that, Mark. When we heads up, I'm, no, I'm, I'm not I'm talking about that. I'm just up. saying, I'm not, I'm not saying anything yeah. about. I can say I got you. No, <laughs> I, got, I got you 100%. <laughs> if it means that much, you, you put your cards on the side, then we'll show after I'll show. <laughs> if it means that much, the dealer will keep your cards on the side. But I got you. Kasuf loves offering to show cards <laughs> afterward, but he never does. All right. He tricked oh, me. Oh, oh, why'd you muck? Oh, if you showed, me. I was gonna show. Oh, I said the dealer would keep the cards on the side. Will and Valentine. It sounds like a new buddy comedy. What's that? Show one. The basement? What's that? Up? To an outer table, some fans on the rail watching this hand develop. Mike Shin's pocket tens flopped a set as Paul Lee caught top two pair on the flop and a diamond flush draw on the turn and bet a half million. Lee, a 42-year-old L.A. business owner. Shin, a 28-year-old Milwaukee business owner. For the record, Lon nor I have never owned a business. <laughs> Shin with a raise to 1.25 million. Lee has Shin covered. Lee had a million-dollar payday in 2007, finishing third in the WPT championship, won by Carlos Mortensen. And Lee will come along for 750,000 more, but some alarms have to be going off in his head. River card. A black seven, Lee misses, Shen's tens, all three of them are still best, checked over to Shen. Very safe card for Shen's set of tens. He says all in. Ah, oh, flop top two, flush try on the turns, it's crazy. I don't think I can lay it down. I don't know if he can lay it down either, but the question is, would Shen do this with a worse two pair? Actually, this seems like Lee, for most of his chips, has to decide if Shin is bluff shoving or does he have a monster. I call. That's too bad. And that will give Mike Shin a full double up with his set of tens. Shin had a big hand and now has a big chip stack. He does indeed. On the other side of that coin, Paul Lee left with a dangerously small stack. Mike Shin will stack over seven million now. After that bet and call, Shin is <clears throat> well positioned late on day five. The best poker content on the internet. Your super high roller bowl seven champion. Oh yeah. Wheels are coming off. That's the craziest hand I've ever seen. What was that fight? Go to get.pokerco.com slash YT24 for $20 off a new annual subscription. The fifth largest main event field in history. 6,737 players down now to under 100 late on day five. Last year's champ Joe McCann started day five as the chip leader. This year's start of day five chip leader, Brian Pacioli, hoping to duplicate that feat. Mike Davinsky having the main event all first-timers dream of. When I play the main event for the first time, I'm wearing those glasses and that T-shirt. Another Canadian, Griffin Benger, also enjoying a great main event. He does TV commentary on the side. I also do TV commentary on the side. This guy's trying to take food off of my table. Also at this this table is Russian-born Dietrich Fast, who is deep in the main event for the first time. Winning money, getting first place, getting the trophy. I think this is why I play poker. Going deep and winning tournaments, it's way more fun than busting every day. And tournaments is way different than cash games, where you in cash games you have less variance and make, make the money more steadily depends on your skill level and tournaments, there's so much variance. So it's a stressful life as a tournament poker player. But Dietrich's good at it. He won a bracelet last year and won the WPT LAPC this year, busting Alex Keating in third. With King Queen suited, he just three bet all in for just over a million. Original Razor Aaron Johnson with a slightly bigger stack calls with pocket jacks. Oh, don't worry, Dietrich. You're up against pocket jacks. You're fine. Yeah, Johnson hoping those jacks hold up. Should we tell him now or just let it play out? Let it play out. <laughs> okay. Hey, when you're all in, you're supposed to throw your jacket over your left shoulder. Jeez. <laughs> right here at the flop. A queen in the window, and that pumps jacks full of holes. Sit down. You're good. Sorry, Aaron. <laughs> Johnson about to perhaps lose two-thirds of his chips. Turn card. Seven does not help Johnson. 
And now Johnson will need a jack and a jack only to knock out Dietrich Fast. Fast, who lives in Austria now, waits for the river. Another deuce, and Dietrich Fast scores the double up. Sit down, relax, order a yoo-hoo. <laughs> the double up keeps Dietrich in it now, but Fast must take advantage of the good fortune he just had and build his stack up, currently sitting with 36 big blinds. No longer the short stack at this table. Fast with a quick and obvious double up against the Jacks. Dietrich said he moved to Austria because his friends were moving there, which I guess is something you can do when you're young. Norman, he said he likes you, but doesn't want you to make a joke about his name. Well, how about the fact that he once did an apprenticeship in freight forwarding and ended up working as a pizza delivery driver? That's a lateral career move at best. Also at this table, Jonas Lauk, who also lives in Austria, born in Germany. Two black aces for Lauk. Lauk sitting with... Almost 2.8 million chips. We have and a raise. He's gonna raise it. 140,000. 140, 140,000. 140, 140, we have a raise from a pretty aggressive player. That's what we should say. We have a raise from a very aggressive player. <laughs> <laughs> Dietrich prompting the dealer for some editorial uh, comments. You know what the best player is? Oh, man. <laughs> Advertising. I saw you had this face as ace. I saw it. I wanted to talk him in, you know, but... If I do soft season. Couldn't do more. Sorry, you know. I sure he was folding now after the speech. I've already learned a lesson about defending, defending light against you. Now you fold the king green, I guess. <laughs> Lock with 49 big blinds. He was the money bubble boy in last year's main event. Earned free entry into this year's main event. Well, maybe he was bubble boy because every time he raised with aces, he got no action. Absolutely. You got to get paid when you have the aces. Back to the featured table. Chip leader Will Kasup holding Sorry. court. That is Jesse Cohen, poker pro from Ardmore, Pennsylvania, with ace deuce. Nine big blinds left for Cohen, who has 32 World Series caches. Over 850,000 in lifetime earnings. He is all in for 565,000. Tony Gregg with pocket all eights. In. And Gregg with only 19 big blinds left. He re raises all in. See if there are any takers behind Greg. Mitch Garshovsky folds his big blind. So Greg with only 19 bigs, as you said, has a chance to knock out a player. Cohen graduated from Colgate University with a double major in psychology and Spanish, which means he was going to play poker for a living. <laughs> All right, so Greg looking to get a little healthier. He has been dragging near the bottom of the chip stacks lately. Cohen at risk. Greg indeed badly needs these chips too. And Cohen finds his ace and takes a huge lead going to the turn. So Tony Greg now looking to get lucky. Jesse Cohen was Alex Keating's stunt double on day four here. <laughs> All right, turn card now. King of spades, Greg's waning hopes of playing on day six, getting waner. I'm gonna hear the reaction before I see it. <laughs> waning can become waner I don't and know. then wanest. <laughs> queen of spades. River card is a queen oh, no, of hearts. Yeah, yeah. And that is a double up for Jesse Cohen. Six, six, six. I said right queen on the river. I just, I just wanted, I wanted Cohen now sitting with 1.3 million chips. As Tony Gregg will try to rebuild what is now a 10 big blind stack. The end boss might be nearing the end. He'll need a little luck, all his skill, and maybe, just maybe, he'll survive the day. On day one, the starting stack was 50,000. Our chip leaders are nearing 10 million. The chip average at the final table will be over 37 million. At an outer table, Alex Keating and his pet beard flopped a set of tens. Keating checked the river. Good thing, because Farhad Jamasi has a jack eye straight and put Keating all in. I feel like you're angry about the uh, about the sixty thousand you had to put in. Come on, this could be my last hand. Tell me something. It's a wet board, Lon. Could you just say there's a lot going on? Flush got there, straight got there. No, I'm paid to sound percipient. <laughs> it's a wet board, Lon. <laughs> Keating gets away from it. Hard to fold oh, a set. Oh, Keating makes the good laydown. Jamasi building his stack now. I'm so happy to cover the back there. Let's see how it's Let's see how my friend. Queen Jack. Keating getting short. You can turn my hand over. I had a set of tens. Jamasi up to almost 4.9 million. All right, so a shifting of power out there. Nearby, Florida Poker Pro Derek Bowers in seat number two is at risk with pocket jacks and just seven big blinds. Belgian Poker Tournament director Kenny Hallart looking for the knockout with one over and two clubs. Bowers trying to survive pocket jacks. Here comes the flop. 
Deuce 10-10 keeps the pocket jack safe for the moment, but Hallart with a flush draw. One benefit poker tournament directors have in other events, they get one nice. redeal per day. It's a professional courtesy. Bowers with jacks up, one card from a double up. Bowers still looking to dodge a queen or club. And the river is a club. Derek Bowers flush down the Game. river. Game, bro. Hallart will take the last of his chips and move over nine million. Ask not for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for the Lon McCarran Memorial Hand. Bowers with a second straight main event cash. Back to the feature table. A new player under the lights, Sacramento, California's own Tony Bracey with over 6.7 million chips. He's seated next to Valentin Vornicu, who is trying to translate his success in World Series of Poker circuit events into big money on the biggest stage in the game. Well, coming to poker is funny, <laughs> funny enough, one of my uh, uh, professors from, from back home in Romania, Jijal Militaru, he, he told me uh, that I would be good at it. Uh, he told me, like, man, I, I think you would do really well, you know, rather than do research in a lab, you would do much better just playing poker tournaments. You would crush those guys. And so it was like, all right, I, I'm going to take a chance. So I took 600 bucks and started with it, and, and now here I am. <laughs> When he first came to America from Romania, all he knew about poker was five-card draw from Westerns, now Valentin, with eight circuit rings over the last five years. Uh, first timer here at the main event, though, working with over six million chips. He raises to 135 with ace-deuce offsuit. I hate raising with the weak ace from early position. Mitch Garshovsky on the button, 57-year-old local player, but born in New York. You may recall he was the one who called the clock on Stacey Madison in that Will Kasuf hand. What's the bet, sir? He's going to call for 135 with a bigger ace. Will Kasuf now. He hates to sit on the sidelines. Can he play that? Well, I know he likes 8-6. Four Trey is half of 8-6. He might play. Wow, very observant, Mr. Color Commentator. But no, he does not. So heads up, Garshovsky, ace-10 against Vornikus, ace-deuce. I guess the weak ace is all the rage on the circuit. <laughs> Here is the flop. And there is an ace for both. Highlighting the troublesome weak ace syndrome for Vornicu. Yeah, Bernie Madoff used to play the weak ace. Look at what happened to so him. So. <laughs> Vornicu so. checks wisely. Garshowski will bet his ace 10, 200,000. Garshowski has 24 World Series caches and finished 290th at the 07 main event. There's a call from the weak ace. Turn card, five of diamonds, all suits represented. Vornicu with a wheel draw. But Doogie on the board. <laughs> Vornicu checks again. Garshowski chips in hand again. Three and a quarter. The weak ace is also a bad hand in five card draw. And I wouldn't even play it in Candyland. <laughs> Vornicu's coming along. Three lavenders and a green. A million and a half in the middle river card. Tray of clubs. Vornicu rivers the straight, and the weak ace backup plan comes through. Dirty run out. Now Vornicu with chips in hand. Valentin puts together 660,000. What a dirty run out. And Garshowski is getting short, so these chips and this pot mean a lot to him. Garshowski with plenty invested. How can he not pay Valentin off here? He has to get it in, in the river. Because he's afraid of a check check so he won't get paid. But he's got to get it in there to get paid. I don't know what that means, but hopefully he figures out he is beat. He's sick if you hit a deuce. Then it's sick. This is going to cost him a big percentage of his remaining stack if he calls. And he does just that. Vornicu shows the ace and the deuce. Wow. That's so sick. Sorry, man. Yeah. Is that any hand that made sense? Nice hand. Had to be ace. Six, six, six. Nice hand. Yeah. I'd have been involved this in king race, well. yeah. deuce. Yeah, one of the two. I river, I river two pair if I get involved. Once he calls, you're not calling. No, pre-flop. I was in the big blind. No, once, once he calls, you're not calling. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's what I mean. Like, yeah, oh, 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 oh,
but you pro- uh, anyway, don't worry about it. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, it was a disciplined fall from me in free flop. Yeah. I nearly called it because Price didn't pre, but <laughs> Mitch left with ten big blinds. Oh. You guys could team up. That's it. I know. It'll be quite right? a product. I write. He speaks. Like it's that's perfect. it. I'll do the audio <laughs> page. I'll definitely do it. Why not? It's good to talk. We should. Valentin seemed almost sincerely apologetic when he took that pot from Garshovsky. All right, so Garshovsky and Tony Gregg in the red zone here with 10 and 9 big blinds respectively at this feature table. And Gregg is yeah, all Tommy. in with a 7 off. Garshovsky, a 6. And he's all in. Whoops. Kasuf in the small blind. Folds. Veo gives it up. So officially, it's Tony Gregg at risk, but Garshovsky has him covered by only 40,000 chips. Well, how do you like getting called from with that and being ahead? Yeah, I mean, I'll take it. When you snap. Deuce five, Trey Garshovsky with the only live gut shot and a chop now quite unlikely. Yeah. You, you got further ahead though. There, there's more chops with the ties than the gut shots. Turn card, queen of clubs. Greg still ahead with a seven. It might be the jack of diamonds. I'm sure it's a red jack on the river. And jack. Oh, nine. Okay. And nine, and that secures the critically needed double up for Tony Gregg. The credibility is gone. Yeah, I know. I'm losing my touch. Dear Will, stop calling cards. Love all of us. In just two hands, Mitch Garshovsky goes from a playable stack to less than one big blind. His main event clock is running out. A full moon over the Rio, just 11 tables in action. And one of them, our next World Series of Poker main event champion, $8 million up top. At one of the featured tables, high stakes poker pro Griffin Benger, a huge Blue Jays fan and a huge fan of this game. I love poker because it's the most challenging thing in the world to me. Um, because there's no top of the mountain, really, where you're, where you're up there and you're just like, you can't get any better. The game constantly is evolving and shifting and changing, and you have to evolve and shift and change with it. But if there is a particular mountain that's pretty high, it's World Series of Poker Main Event Champion. Griffin oh Benger my. in action. He has seen Harry Berkovich from Israel raise with 10-7 of hearts. <laughs> Benger in the big blind. And he'll come along with 10-9 of clubs. If you, if you can call my hand by the, by the time I fold or win the pot, I'll give you everything in my wallet. Okay? Don't need to do Benger and Dietrich Fast have become good buddies at the main event. Eight, Trey, seven, a straight Check. flush draw for Benger. Middle pair for Berkovich, but not favored. Let me guess Griffin's hand. I'll wipe him out. <laughs> How much did you start with, Rob? Take a look yourself. About 2.4 million, Griffin. Approximately? 2.4. Don't answer him. If he wants an approximation, tell him to hire an approximation assistant. <laughs> I'm all in. Well, Berkovich should ask Benger approximately how many chips he has just for the heck of it. I don't know if Berkovich wants to risk his main event on middle pair. All of Berkovich's previous caches came in last year's daily deep stacks here at the Rio, so not a lot of tournament success for him. This is a big moment, and he does fold. Hey, Excellent Church. play by Benger. Yes. I check shove. Did you guess my hand? I'll give you all the money in my wallet. Six, five, four. Stop. That was a good guess. You got it. You got it wrong. What did you say? He said six, five. He said ten, nine of clubs. Uh, you, uh, yeah, and I would have given you everything in my wallet. Gosh, Dietrich could have gotten a, a David Buster's power card. <laughs> 93 remain. We go to an outer table. Per Linda has pocket nine center screen. He has raised enough to put Alex Keating all in. Alex and his sidekick Beard calls with pocket tens. Keating, 28-year-old Austin, Texas pro. Linda, 27-year-old Swedish poker player and student. Pair started the hand with 5.3 million. Keating's last 1.1 million is in the pot as he takes another spin with tens. Here's the flop, two diamonds in there. Keating holds the only diamond in play, no drama. Keating, strangely quiet during this all-in. It's making me uncomfortable. Hey, you got diamonds. No, I don't want to red diamonds. Hey, don't get hot diamonds. 
Turn card. Jack of spades. No help to pair Linda. Hey. Hey. One more. I would think hey. Keating would filibuster here to try to ward off the bad luck. Linda needs a river nine to knock out Alex Keating. The river? Keating gets the double out. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Hey, Alex. Oh, oh. Sir. I didn't There's Pear, let it down. Go. I had nine five. No, I just had nine five. I, I, I would have I been we were no problem with you saying that. that. <laughs> wait, wait, you had nine five? Where was your money? I feel like I got cheated for a third of the pot. Back in full throat. <laughs> Keating will sit down eventually to 40 big blinds. Pair over pair over pair. I had to, sorry. Alex Keating doubles up to keep his main and his main of it alive. Nailed it. Oh, please. World Series of Poker main event, day five on its last legs at an outer table since Jerry Wong, his move from New York to Florida has changed this 34-year-old's entire perspective. I'm Jerry Wong from Brooklyn, New York. Currently living in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Uh, Fort Lauderdale, like the nice places are a little nicer. In Brooklyn, it's like even no matter how rich you are, you wake up and you go outside and see garbage bags and rats. And the weather in the winter is awesome. I just wear basketball shorts and flip-flops all year round. Get to play basketball with a bunch of guys down there every Tuesday and a bunch of real good guys, uh, pretty uh, good poker players too. Playing basketball is uh, really good for uh, mental focus and for just keeping you sharp and uh, keeping that competitive drive alive for poker as well. The message there is, if you're gonna be a slacker, better to do it in warm weather than cold. Jerry in a hand against one-time main event chip leader Brian Pacioli, who has the ball cap sitting on his head correctly with pocket nines. Wong has one-upped him by flopping a pair of tens. You see how the board is complete now. Pacioli has the action. Pacioli's got a... Uh Toby McGuire thing going, no? Yeah, you're right about that. He checks it to Wong. Wong checks back. Wong with a flop pair of tens will take the pot. Tens beat nines in New York City, Fort Lauderdale, or Las Vegas. Wong takes it, pushing his stack now over 6.3 million. He has tripled his holdings here on day five. Wong with over 1.3 million in career poker earnings, 105 big blinds. Pacioli began day five with four million. This drops him to just below three million. You know, Wong's dressed like he's still in Brooklyn. <laughs> All right, right now the average stack, 3.7 million. When we left amateur Paul Lee, he had only 725,000 chips. In the hat, Fernando Pons with Jack 10, trying to take the rest of Lee's chips after he committed them to the pot with ace eight. The flop is 499, ace high still ahead. Pons, a 37-year-old account executive from Spain. We saw Lee lose most of his chips to Mike Shin. Pons pairs up to paint Lee in a corner. Now Lee looking for a red ace. Another 10, tens full for Pons, and that will send Paul Lee to the payout window. Well, if you have a sour look on your face before the river, you never get bailed out. I wish people would learn this. Be positive, get positive results. Be negative, get negative results. So Pons building his stack to an impressive 7.6 million. Lee's first main event cash and many tries is worth over 57 grand. So with Lee's knockout, the payout has increased every one left, guaranteed at least $67,855. At a feature table, short stack Aaron Johnson in the big blind, King Eight of Diamonds. Mike Navinsky opened for 120,000 with 7.5. Harry Berkovich called with pocket deuces. Johnson with four bigs to start the hand. He's not all in there. Johnson leaves 50K behind, hoping he doesn't have to commit the rest of this hand. He's thinking about the pay jump. Well, the pay jump already happened. I guess they don't know that here at this table. Navinsky now. 25-year-old Vancouverite with a four bet to 570. That's not very polite. Well, I do not comprehend that four bet with 7-5. It's beyond comprehension. Berkovich probably folds, but Novinsky cannot drive out Johnson. He's only got two chips left. Berkovich does fold his pocket pair. Johnson looking for a tournament clock to see where the payout is. The pay jump has happened. He's all in. <laughs> Let's see. Am I live? Yeah, I'm live. <laughs> yeah, he's live. <laughs> But with that seven high re-raise, if Mike applied to Norman Chad School of Poker, we might reject that application and we accept everyone. <laughs> Here is the flop. Middle pair for Nabinsky, but top pair for Johnson. 
200 pounds. Huh? Yeah, like, I didn't notice how much he had when I made that race. It was the dumbest race I've ever made. <laughs> okay, that makes sense. And he's admitted his error. Huh? Heck, to be honest, he could be an instructor no at the Norman Chad School of Poker. Wow, what a turnaround for you. All right, turn card. Ten of clubs. Levinsky coming up short. Johnson still good with his pair of eights. Johnson looking to avoid a seven or a five. The river is a nine. Johnson garners the double up and a bit more thanks to Berkovich's chips. Johnson hangs on. Navinsky hit the flop, but he couldn't run good enough to score another victim. First timers, experienced pros, trash talkers, we have it all this year. At our featured table, high stakes pro Jason Less has battled all day with Will Kasuf. Wow. Wow, ah, that's impressive. More moves than Mick Jagger. Like a boss. A limp check raise, eh? What a move. All right, just in case you're bluffing. So I got the best hand, 100%. Good fold. I had it. I'll be relentless with a capital R. There's not much room for debate. Will has gotten the best of Jason nearly every time they've butted heads. Kara Scott has more on this California Pro. I spoke to Jason on the break, and he said that he's very comfortable at our feature table. He has William on his left, who's pretty talkative, but Jason points out that as a high-stakes, heads-up cash specialist, someone who plays in high rollers against the toughest opponents in the world, he's really used to a certain amount of pressure. He thinks maybe William is using his chat to uh, put pressure on the table himself to find his edge there, and he says more power to him, but Jason doesn't think it's going to be working against him. As the long day of poker winds to a close, Jason's facing a different kind of pressure than he's used to seeing at the table. Jason under the gun now, his sixth straight year playing in the main event. This will be his first cash, but he's got over 700,000 in other World Series earnings. Ace Jack of Spades, a raise to 130. When I ran into Jason earlier, the first thing he said to me was, this is beyond fairy tale. It's inconceivable I'm still here. He had me at fairy tale. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Kasufa opted to fold. Tony Bracey. Tony Bracey's got the look. <laughs> it's his time now. I just, hey, I'm going to give him a chance. He gave it to me. It's, it. it's like a yeah. disease. <laughs> it's like a disease. <laughs> it's contagious. He's just trying to fill the void. That's it. On the button, Tony Gregg with pocket tents. The great Tony Gregg's been sitting on a short stack for a while. Plus, I got him drink a beer. Man. <laughs> Greg with uh, just over right. 1.1 <laughs> million, and they're yeah. all almost all going in. Yeah. Anybody bust down there? There's a couple yeah. of orange chips behind. <laughs> well, Mitch Garshovsky is running out of chips. He's got 60K already in there in the big blind, but he's got no hand here. No, no wait for a better spot, I guess. So back to Les now. Jason Les has a hand. Ace Jack suited. He's comfortable at the moment, just north of 50 big blinds. He probably figures he is at best in a race here. This would be for one third of his stack. It's okay. I'm gonna fold. He's gonna give it up. Show the bluff, go for the game. He's not bluffing. You see it on the TV. TV. See it on TV. You see you are bluffed on TV. Oh, one time. Nice, nice hand, man. Les decides not to gamble. Yeah, maybe he knows Tony is not shoving with worse than Ace Jack. To a familiar outer table, Wong and Pacioli added again. Wong with Ace King called the all in from the shorter stack. Pacioli with Ace Queen of Hearts. It's a rainbow flop. Ace King still good for Wong. Wong has Pacioli's number again, and this one could send Pacioli home. Turn card. Nine of clubs puts a straight draw on the board, so Pacioli adds some chop outs. Wong poised for the knockout. To survive here, Pacioli needs an eight to chop or a queen. The river card, another nine. Wong takes the last of Pacioli's chips, and Brian Pacioli finishes the 2016 main event in 84th place. Out, it just takes one day to go from penthouse to outhouse. I guess you were right, Norman. Leaderboards mean nothing. Nobody listens to me. <laughs> Pacioli ships almost three million to Wong. And Jerry Wong is now the main event chip leader. No hands straight down. Then I made probably a big mistake for the rest of it. That's how it goes sometimes. Frustrating way, frustrating day, I guess. Very. Yep. Yep. Well, solemn Brian Pacioli heads to the payout cage. 
All right, let's get back to our main feature table where Will Kasuf is still the top stack with eight and a half million. This is why we should straddle or raise blind so they don't know I've got a monster under the gun, you see? <laughs> now, fall, 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 and then I have to show the monster hand, see? This is why it kills the action. This kills the game. It really does. There you go. Kasuf raised under the gun. Garshowski's all in from the small blind and the big Jason Les with pocket tens. Les has a degree in computer science from UC Irvine, but that does not prepare you for the human science that is Will Kasuf. That's a fun time. I'm enjoying this main event. Well, he wants to tangle. He has to tangle with Kasuf again with that hand. Three-way action here if you include Mitch Garshovsky, who is all in for one big blind. Less just with the call with the tens. Garshovsky hoping that ace-deuce works for him. There's a deuce with two fives. Garshovsky way behind Les's tens. Check, check from Les and Kasuf. King of diamonds, Les with pocket tens, still best. Check to Kasuf, who has a flush draw. He checks. River six. Check, check. Oh, no pairs, no pairs. Sounds. That's it for me. Oh, no player all in. Everyone needs to show their hand. Need to show. Maybe better say. Shosky's done. Betting them to side pot. Turn the flush draw though. I beat, actually beat one of you. Yeah. Les still can't get many chips from Kasuf. And Mitch Garshovsky's main event is over. Mitch with his best ever recorded poker cash. Well done, sir. He'll pick up almost $68,000, but this feature table was nothing short of a disaster for Mitch Garshowski out of the main event in 82nd place. The high roller just off the strip, a must-see and ride in Las Vegas. Why'd you get penalized earlier? I saw you getting a penalty. Uh, for taunting a poor woman. <laughs> That's a microaggression. You should be all over Twitter. What do you right do? What'd you do, man? Let me hear your story. It was not a micro. That was a macroaggression. What's the story before I read it? What's the story? What's the true story? He talks to her, talks to her. And she's like rattled. She's trying to get him a penalty for talking about his hand. <laughs> heads up, even right? though, yeah, heads up. I'm only, I didn't say anything about my hand. Finally, she folds and he shows a bluff. Mm. And they give him a penalty because they told him to be quiet a she bunch of times. She folds Queen's face up she on She folds Queen's, yeah. yeah. She, they told him to be quiet a bunch yeah. of times. Well, she got the clock called on. Her, and then her hand just. Oh, some, some other guy. Some other guy. Is that an Asian the guy chick? just busted. Hey, was she Asian? Took, no. Called uh, the clock after being Stacey there. Stacy like, or something? Hands. No, some American chick. Oh, with a hat. And then she got really lucky against one of my rattle. friends. And then, like the very next hand, she gets an aces against King Jack and loses. And it comes it, King King. It, it was like a really sick, like back-to-back -back <laughs> hand. For her. It was yeah. Really sick. Is this the last hand? This is the last hand. It spells William on his forehead. This is it. Tables winding up for the night. Look at this, Paul. I'll make it 120. Give me a discount. A raise from Kasuf. Surprise. Tony Bracey has the look. Got a plan. 120. You saw the top pro Paul Volpe has joined this table as well. Vornicu King Jack. Two top stacks at this table, Kasuf and Vornicu. Vornicu in his first main event, one hand away from making day six. A re-raise to 325. Really? Against the biggest stack, Tony Gregg will make day six with that fold. Ace nine in the big blind for Volpe. What did Volpe get here? He can play. When he sits down at a table, I just hand him all my chips and get up. It saves time. 7.4 million. Volpe folds C on day six. Was that necessary? Well, my hand, yeah. Vornicker with position on Kasuf. Kasuf usually oh. negates position with his patter. Is it 320 or 325? 325. Wow, it's another cooler. Oh, I've got a nice even stack here. We're done, right? Depends if uh, Valentin and I go all in here. Yeah. We might not be done yet. We could swap 10% now and just, just go all in and call and then uh, swap 10%. That right? was the last hand though, wasn't it? It is possible Kasuf will hand, talk yeah. until the start of day six. <laughs> <laughs> if I show my best card, you show your best card? Deal? Like I fold. Tomorrow's another day. I fold. King high. I'll, I'll show both. You show both. I had royal flush draw with mine, but you can show. Come on. I fold. I fold. I fold. You win. The other cup. That's a cooler. Diamonds. There you go. You can show the other one now. Be a sport. Come on. I can't. Royal flush draw, man. I can't. Royal flush draw. I can't. Even if you bluff me, it's good to show. Last hand, man. I didn't, last hand. I didn't bluff you. You didn't bluff me? You I sure? I didn't bluff you. 
Huh? I'm sure. Are you sure? Oh, that's sure. it. Yeah, yeah. You sure you didn't bluff me? I didn't bluff you. No. I had the internet nuts. Marvelous. Valentin will sleep better after that exchange. Some action still wrapping up. One last check on Alex Keating and his beard accomplice. Alex showing pocket jacks after calling the all-in of Vladimir Geshkin Bane with pocket sixes. As I've mentioned before, Keating talks a lot and creates the illusion of action, but he plays pretty snug and usually has a big hand. Vladimir finished 62nd in the 2013 main event. Born in Russia, grew up in Switzerland, and lives in Malta, and right now checking Travelocity for the cheapest flight out. <laughs> He's got EPT and APPT titles to his credit. Looking to hang on his sixes against the Jacks, and a Jack in the flop. Keating has him all but drawing dead. Keating appears to be meditating through this all-in. Geshkin Bain actually in a relatively festive mood. The turn card now. Another race. Geshkin Bain drawing dead. Jack's full for Keating. Scoring the elimination. Geshkin Bain's 14th World Series cash, including his third at the main event. Geshkin Bain finishes in 81st place, having enjoyed the recent pay bump. He'll take home almost $81,000. Keating began day five with 2.6 million. He has more than doubled that. He's awfully quiet. Did Alex exceed his quota of words for day five? <laughs> the survivors look ahead to day six. I'm uh, going to go quick to, to my house. Uh, probably have, maybe I'll have a beer, I think. Uh, but then go to bed and try to get as much sleep as possible and be ready for day six. Uh, I started with two million today. I ran it up to 11 and a half. I'm pretty happy about it. It ran really, really good. Uh, maybe I should just stay home tomorrow. Uh, I think I used it all up today, but uh, I'll be back tomorrow try to gather a few more. A great day five for the Brooklynite turned Floridian Jerry Wong. Jan Sukhanek and Kenny Hollert, the only other stacks above 10 million. Stay home tomorrow, Jerry. You'll be fine. Go ride the high roller. I go through moments of like, this is the main event, and then I go through moments of, eh. It's like, I can't, I can't decide whether, whether it is or it isn't. Like, just like, oh, it's not that big of a deal. And then, I, I, and then like, the support from my like, friends and stuff is just like, so huge. I, get, I don't look at my phone that much, and I do, and it's just like, obliterated, right? And then I'm like, oh, right, this is the thing. This is the thing though with the win. With day five in the books, two players are making sure their deep runs are heard loud and clear. Wow, it's another cooler. I got you. Did you bluff me? Oh, it was your money. I feel like I got cheated for a third of the pot. But look how Valentin played his hand superbly, <laughs> like a boss. <laughs> While first timers like Valentin Vornico keep on keeping on. That makes TV. I'm gonna frame it. 80 players are left. We might not be done yet. As the final table just keeps getting closer. For Norman Chad and Kara Scott, I'm Lon McCarran. We are on to day six.